And a happy Wednesday morning to you. Welcome to the EST Hangout. Matt Awanek, Tom Gazzola with you here. Actually, I should have fixed this a little bit earlier. Fix it. Um, Fix it well, it's the, and, and Jay Mill, EST Glue Guy is here. Glue guy. And Glue Guy has done it yet again. Now, I haven't had it yet, but, but popcorn Jay, balls. You're, you're clutch, He man. brings coffee in firstly. Oh, and then so good. he also brings these popcorn balls, which I don't know if I've ever tried before. Is this caramel? Oh, yeah. So oh, it, my mother-in-law, Colleen. Sorry for everyone on the channel, by the way, while I'm adjusting the camera. It doesn't go smooth. Colleen, thank you. Uh, but continue. Sorry to interrupt. So she's in town for the week because it's uh, winter break for the girls. Oh, so, is, there, is that a thing? Hence why one of them's here with Grace me today. Here. Yeah. Um, wow. She made the... So this is like, you know, your... Either your mother or your mother-in-law or, you know, they all have their specialties. Yeah. This is by far one of hers. It's it's a it's a trade I secret. I could taste why. Yeah, it's it's, it's so pretty good. special. And she's able to still keep the popcorn soft. How? That's, that's the secret. It's delicious. Yeah. See, you've probably had popcorn balls before, but they're rock hard. Mm-hmm. This here is just a different blend. It's a uh, it's a special blend that keeps it soft. Oh, I think it incredible. has something to do with the temperature of the syrup that you that you when heat you up. Do it and stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I was worried. Being on air, you shouldn't eat early. Yeah, true. It's going to be hard to take that. Like, it's going to. Well, with all my years of broadcasting stuck. experience, I know this. Um, <laughs> and you just this. You've been teaching us this for mm. the last number of years. Um, but that was just very easy to eat. Look, Tom crushed nice. his. No, I'm saving some for later. Oh, okay. I thought you actually finished like the way you were crumpling that up or something. I was like, I, you just absolutely devoured that I right there. Be but eating no. on camera. Um, well, we can eat on camera. It's the audio part that I think is the worst. As long as you're not eating with your mouth open, there was that's uh, the key because that's just not right. Elon Musk was on Joe Rogan's podcast there last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, was he? And they had pizza on the podcast. What kind of pizza? Just a was it a cheese pizza? Okay, I but got another question for that. You could like hear them chomping, and it was like cringy. You it's know, the that, audio part of it. The audio is yeah. gross. Is like I nobody likes to hear each other eat. If you watch someone eat, that's one <sighs> thing. Like that's it's it's hearing the actual everything about. It. I don't need to get fully into it. That's no, just I, that's just. I like that unnecessary. Jersey. That is doesn't, nice. Doesn't Maddie looks sharp today? Bruno Fernandez, Manchester United, uh, big, big, big Champions League match today. Uh, we need this win. We need these three points. They are absolutely crucial if we're looking to advance in the Champions League. Are you a starter and or a sub? I, I'm me a starter. Oh, what do you okay. expect? I'm just double checking. I ain't a starter. You I'm never going to be a starter. There. So, uh, yeah, one o'clock today. So I, uh, sorry, I just want to test our audio there quickly. But uh, nice. Yeah, it's uh, that's one thing I do love about soccer is that they do release new jerseys every year. And when there's one that you like or whatever, you just buy it, and then you stick with that for a few years. You don't have to buy it every year, and you just wait for the good ones that you like. And this was the first name jersey I ever got in soccer. Is it so, an old one or a new one? Um, it's about four seasons old, I would say. Oh, Maybe okay. so. It's well, you've kept like, it in good shape. I don't wear it much. I don't wear the soccer kits generally outside of when my team plays. I got to start gotcha. doing that a little more. Um, because, like, what jerseys are the easiest to wear every day? Soccers are very easy. Well, you could just I've throw never it worn on. a soccer jersey. I'm not a soccer guy. But, but you can just throw this on with whatever. Yeah. I mean, you got a oh. hoodie under it. It looks... looks. You know. You're not wearing an Euler jersey just because. No, like, no. They're not comfortable. No. They're meant yeah. to be... Because that's the thing. Like, NFL jerseys, they don't... They're not the same as what the players wear. Yes. No. And right? I love the fan... Like, it's, 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 a, it's, a, jersey. Yeah. it's a totally different yeah. fit. Because you can't... You wear it, it's like a fitted, not fitted, but it's not, like, the, if you honestly were to try on an NFL jersey, you would not be able to put it on. Right. Even on you, without pads. That's how skin tight these things are. Like, the Golden Bears football, which we got to talk about, which we I'm sure it's on the list, will. but the Golden Bears got new jerseys, like, four years ago, updated them, because it used to be everything was loose, and you'd have, you know, you, you could easily grab somebody, right. but now they're so tight that guys have to take the jersey and pads off at the same time. It's like they're oh, glued to the pads. That's why that happens. Yeah. So guys don't just take their jersey. Like when I played, you'd just take your jersey off. And then you take your pads but off. But now when in practice, you always see the jersey with the pads. Because it, it physically cannot happen. And that is separately. a holding. Oh, yeah. The tighter the, the better yeah. because yeah. You're just there's less things to grab, right? Yeah. 
but it is incredibly tight. So whereas NHL jerseys, like my Oilers jersey, it's got freaking uh, Wings. Tie down straps in the yeah. back for you know for fighting. Oh, you got right? one of those ones. Well, yeah, and it's like you can't wear it, and it, like it, I don't know, it's like the arms are shorter. You know, it, it's like a hockey jersey. Yeah, but they don't. It, it's you know, more difficult to pull off in everyday fashion. The baseball jerseys are good. Yeah, those are good. NBA, the stupid jerseys though. can be, but that also is like I think a seasonal thing. You, you, and it's, it's a hockey thing, thing though. I mean, because the hockey j- sweaters or sh- jerseys, like you can wear a hoodie under them. Yes, well, right? people do that to games all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. A solid that's a classic. Clock. That's a move for um, sure. But you're going to the game. If you're yeah. just going, you got to go to the office nine to five. You ain't doing that. It's no. Little, I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah. The the NBA jerseys, like that's a summer thing though. I feel more than yeah, it's like for a tank every top. day wear it's like a tank top. than putting the shirt on underneath and just wearing that jersey as an everyday type wear compared to like a soccer jersey. Like if we're ranking yeah, yeah. this, obviously you can do whatever you want. Wear whatever the hell you want. Don't listen to us, except Tommy, because he's very fashionable. But it's if we're ranking like what's the best to worst, I, I think soccer's right up there followed by baseball. It's easy. Um NBA jerseys, it's almost like a statement when you wear an NBA jersey now, right? And I think that that's kind of what the NBA jersey has become. They have the city jerseys. They have, they have like six different uniforms per team. So it's almost like a statement piece, don't you think? I can't remember the last time I saw somebody wearing an NBA jersey. Well, we You're are not here around here a lot city, right? with uh, Eric. Eric does them. Quite Eric does them, yeah. eh? Okay. Yeah. Then, I mean, he could wear them, though. Mm-hmm. That's a yeah. guy you could look at and say, yeah. You can yeah. pull that off. If I came in wearing a Raptors jersey, you'd you'd all wonder if I lost the bet. Jersey with shirt or just jersey? Well, that depends on a lot of things. That depends on your okay, body type. Well, I'm saying for you. Yeah, good. For it's, me? It's July. It's 20 degrees outside. You're coming in on the hangout. You're, <laughs> you're like, I'm wearing my Raptors jersey. Don't care what anyone thinks. Is uh, it shirt underneath or is it just jersey? I'd like I'm to, shirt underneath <laughs> always. I'd like to say just jersey, but... It's kind of a it's kind of a douchebag move, I think. Yeah, you know, that's true. like, unless, <laughs> right? I'm with you on that. I too. mean, it, it should be shirt underneath, but you know, unless, I mean, okay, if you're going to Horlack Park, maybe taking the dog and a frisbee, and you're going down there with your buddies or whatever, definitely no shirt. Yeah. If you're going to the hangout or let's say the mall or whatever to do some shopping or come on a talk show, definitely shirt. Applies. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree can't see that. a way that it would be acceptable unless you're Lieutenant Eric. I mean, but he can do that. That's he, that's in his uh, that's, that's in his wheelhouse. Yes, it is. That's a fair statement. You like know? he's got that kind of funky style where he could pull it off. Um, the ba- the basketball jersey, yeah, shirt underneath unless it's a hot day and like you said, you're somewhere casual. Baseball jersey. They're ridiculously expensive, first of all. Well, every, all the jerseys are expensive. All the jerseys nowadays. are ridiculous. Actually, ridic- soccer's aren't that crazy. How much is that? Uh, How much would that have been? There's an exchange. I think right now, if you wanted a jersey, it'd be about 150 with a name. That's still potentially kind of expensive. Something. That's pretty expensive. Yeah. But like I remember back in the day when I was younger, it'd be like 150 200 bucks to get an NHL jersey. Yeah. Yeah. And well, now, now, now they're one. Right? And that's the thing. So and I could still, for 100 and some bucks... And I think that's with name, like I said. Yeah. If I wanted without name, and I Jay, think I'm low hunt at hundreds or something. Let me Jay's got the, the tie down off. strap now. And when they switched to Adidas, I remember this at the time working with the Oilers. Um, they're like, yeah, there's going to be no like replica jersey. The one that you can get will be limited and harder mm-hmm. to find. It's going to be, um, and it's going to be a different quality. It's going to be made by Fanatics. And, and Jack Cookson, if he's watching or listening or Ken, if they know they could, send us in a, a delineation between the two but the, basically they eliminated the the uh, replica jersey uh, made by the same company that does the on ice when it was Reebok and Adidas just made you buy the game There's only jersey the one. so that's why oh, okay. we're, that's why if you were to buy a jersey an NHL one and you it's want so expensive. it's 300 bucks has the tie down strap you're wearing <laughs> what the players are literally wearing on the ice that makes sense because I'm just looking right now at a United jersey yeah. um, and it's Two fifty for some of them, two twenty depending yeah. which one you want. But those are the higher end. You, there's some down if you go just for more of the replica, if you will, or the non authentic ones. Yeah. It's around the one fifty mark, yeah. one seventy mark. And so, like when they switch to Fanatics slash Adidas, like the Fanatics, the crest isn't the same. It's not the nice embroidery, and 
it's okay, but it's it's nowhere near as nice as the Reebok replica ones. Where it's, this is just again being a Jersey nerd, like there's a difference. Are but, you a Jersey nerd? Like how many yeah, jerseys do you have? I, I don't I don't buy jerseys. Okay. I just like love uniforms and the aesthetic on the field, on the court, on the ice. That's a big thing for me. I I actually just have a couple of jerseys. I have a Louis DeBrus that I got when I started working at Oilers TV. I was like, Lou, if I get your jersey, I'll hang it up. And he's like, <laughs> hell yeah. And so he made it. He signed it for me, and I have it in a shadow box. And then I have Matt Hendricks. I did an event working when I was with the, the Oilers at the Oilers TV. And they're like, Tom, uh, we can't pay you but extra, but uh, you can <laughs> take a look at any of these jerseys. And it was when they were switching from Reebok to Adidas. And... They're like, just, you can't take McDavid. And I was like, ah, that's fine, whatever. And I was going to take a Brandon Davidson old orange one. And I had it in my hand. And then I kind of, I'm like, I like the classic look. You know, grew up watching the team here with that one. And I found a blue 23 Hendrix. And I knew he was leaving. Uh, he signed with Winnipeg that off season. And the guy, Brad Ellard, great dude that was uh, running events at the time, was like, really? And I'm like, this is the right choice. And I text Hendo. I was like, Look what I got. He's like, I'm like, will you sign it for me? And he goes, there's F yeah. Here's my address. Send it. Uh, so I had it sent. And then he wrote like a really nice uh, thing on the two and then a big signature on the three. And that's another one. And then I have a Jason Strudwick reverse retro Islanders jersey I got last year. And I'm proud of that one. But I have like two Cardinals jerseys Cardinals. that my, my dad and my brother picked up for me when they were in Arizona. And then I have a bunch of Eskimos jerseys, but I don't, I don't really wear them. Uh, I have a Warren Moon and a Mike Riley. Mm. I have a Mike Riley signed Mike Riley jersey. Um, And I kind of hold on to it because it's like my old Redskins gear, Mm -hmm. right? It's it's now sport history almost. Yeah. You know, same as the Eskimos stuff. Yeah. Um, Well, you should still hang on to those. Oh, yeah, I do. I do for that that reason because... But uh, you didn't you know, have, like no one had to get rid of their stuff because of the name no, change, right? No, 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 no. It, of course, it, absolutely because not. Because you're not, you're not throwing away the history of the team at no, all. No, yeah. Uh, I, I did I tell you guys about? Well, you know I'm a Commanders guy, yes, Washington yes. Commanders, and Mark Rippon was one of their Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. He's actually a Canadian, Canadian citizen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turns he was out, in the Tecmo game though when we played. We didn't mind ripping. Turns out, in some roundabout way, one of his descendants goes to sit school with my daughters. No really? Way. Here in town? Wow. Yeah, well, out, out east of Short Park. Okay. And um, in a, <laughs> this is the craziest thing. They're all going down to be together at Christmas time. Because the other Rippin is the quarterback for the... Uh, for the LA Rams right yeah, now. Yeah, because his son right? got in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, didn't look good, but he's no Mark Rip, and I'll tell you that. Not Anyways, many can be. <laughs> so it kind of got back to me that if I was to get a Mark Rip and jersey, it would go down <gasps> with the family and get signed. So I ordered one, and it's on its way. It'll yes. be here right away. N- now, a new jersey with yeah, his name on it? Or did you new get an old, old one? New oh, old so, stock. So it's still... It's a, it's like a throwback. It's style? Yeah, it's a, it's a oh. throwback vintage from his years of playing. The NFL does that so well. Yeah, oh, it is good. It, that jersey was not cheap. But but you're getting it signed. Getting it signed. Yeah. And it's... To like, you, probably. To me. And yeah. I said to personalize it because I, I don't care. To like, I'm glue never gonna, guy. To Boom. ESC glue guy. Uh, first time, second place finisher in the draft. <laughs> Uh, well done, first time way. screw job on the draft, <laughs> which we have to get to as well. I have a statement prepared. <laughs> um, I'll mark it down that we will get to draft. Yeah, yeah. Draft no, but it's going to get down there. So I'm going to I'm going to hang that up downstairs That's in my awesome. basement. You but, get a shadow box for it. Well, I go to the next level. Pro Am Sports, baby. Yeah. I go to yeah, I go to Pro Am and get it custom framed. That's awesome. Yeah, so you can get like the maroon velvet behind it yeah inside the box and i have a peyton manning one that is a signed game worn peyton manning jersey from yeah. the broncos so if there's any peyton manning uh aficionados out there hit me up because uh that's gonna be coming off the wall good call how does your wife handle you putting like do you have delegated spots in the home do you have your man cave do you have an office because i bought a new place over the summer and my, Eva G, my mom's in charge. Like uh, she, she's she stages for my aunt, and uh, I, she's like, 
Okay, now that you have a new home, <laughs> you cannot put any of your sports crap anywhere in the main areas. And I was like, oh my God. So I have the, the EST satellite studio. And I, I'm running running out of room, like Jay. It's a nice looking studio, by the way. Thank you. I, I, need, to, I need to clean it up a little bit. We need but... to get you some more fun things in the background. Yeah, it's a little it's a little busy right now. You know what I have? I yeah. have an Edmonton Wildcats cowbell. Let's get that on. Let's there. get that on. Let's there. get some. Let's, let's get, get some representation. Um, I had a girl from the U of A, played pandas basketball. She's like, "Where's your pandas and and golden bear stuff?" I was like, "I don't have any." She's like, "I'll get it for you." I'm still waiting, cameo. Still waiting. You know my wife played panda ba- pandas basketball. No, yeah. Is that where you guys met? Yeah, man. There's a love story. It's beautiful. Football you, star, basketball star, football star, together. basketball star, yeah. meeting in sub. You know, doting over some Edo Japan. I like days. sub. It's a neat sub's little a place, place to go. Yeah, student union union building. Student union building, which it, it, right it's right now, by Claire Drake, right? Yeah, yeah it's like across, across from the, the Butterdome, like further north. It, it was a place to hang out, but. If you if I was to go there now, I would probably get lost because it's so yeah. different than when than when we attended. But, but you still know how to get to the rat. That's easy to find, <laughs> my friend. All the way up. Yeah, we uh, we used to have this thing that we would do in sub, and uh, it was it was hours of entertainment. Sub was the place where athletes would congregate in general. So you'd see the football guys there, and they'd always have the same table, and and we found that uh, taking super glue and gluing a loony. <laughs> to the ground, right in the main walkway, was a was a really great source of entertainment. <laughs> so that was hours, hours of of missing classes, watching these poor helpless people try and pick up this tang loony until the you know the 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 uh, cleaning crew would come by with the and they they got onto us pretty quick. Yeah. Like they'd come and <laughs> scrape that thing off pretty good. But you used to have games at the at the rat where you would say okay. If you can do this under eight minutes or however X many amount of minutes, you get a, a pitcher of beer, which would be from the rat all the way down to the uh, stadium parkade, mm-hmm. up to the top of the parkade, snow angel on top of the parkade, back down and all the way up to the rat. <laughs> so that would, yeah, it was fun. We used to do a lot of stuff like that. Well, spent a lot of time in rat. We should take the hangout to the rat. That'd be day. awesome. Would they allow us? Of course. It's public. Know. It's a beautiful, it's actually it's one of the nice view, nicest yeah. like, like, area, places to have a bar in Edmonton. Like two of the most underrated spots that people don't know about, is, for especially view-wise, is Rat. Yeah. And then at Nate, there's the business building. If you go up to the top, yeah. there's like a lounge that like has a good view of the city yeah, from does. up there too. That's true. Um, but the Rat's a great spot to go grab a drink. It is awesome. You can see West Edmonton Mall from there. Like, we crazy. should, just we should go to there. like a, a Bears or Pandas game one night and then just go to Rat. Yeah. Well... In two weeks, tell me the Hardy Cup, baby, Foot Field. Oh, you're That'd calling be it awesome. What's happening. We'll get to that. By the way, the Hangout it's presented by Mott's Clamato Caesar. It's the top Caesar brand in the country with over 400 million cans crushed by Canadians every year. Cheers to the Hangout. Cheers to the Mott's Clamato Caesar. No Hangout is complete without Mott's Clamato Caesar. You can get it pickled bean, extra spicy, and original. Um, yeah, let's just quickly get to the Bears here too. I'll call it. I- I'll. They've lost twice. They're not losing a third time to UBC. That is a uh, good I, team. That is... Now, UBC is a great team. Like, I'm not going to take anything away from UBC. That's not going to be an easy game. Well-coached program from Blake, Blake Nill. From his time with the Dinos to the Thunderbirds. Amazing coach. Straight up, not taking anything away from UBC. Mm-hmm. But this Bears team, I don't know. There's it, it, One, it's young. It's a lot of returning players next year, so next year is going to be a lot of fun. Um, got a strong run game, got a great O line, a they good have, quarterback. They have an amazing run game. This run game, and it wasn't even that good this past weekend. Is is like nothing. I don't think the CIS has ever like. Is like, it the running backs or the O line making the holes, or is it a good it's combo? It's a good combination. Okay, good. Matthew Peterson has eleven hundred and twenty-eight yards in eight games. That's one hundred and forty-one yards per game. That's like. That's like that's me playing good. NCAA level good. That's right? crazy. Like where I'm playing that's on low like level Barry and I'm Sanders just Barry right? Sanders numbers in the NFL good. Like, but he's actually doing it. He's doing it right yeah. in front of us. Now, the other side of that is Rooker, the quarterback for UBC. He's averaging 240 yards a game passing. So you can see where the battle lies. If, if the Golden Bears show up defensively. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the big one. If they can get two, two turnovers... 
I'm going to say the over under on two no- turnovers is one and a half. If they can go over that, I think they win this game. And you're right in saying that traditionally it is hard to beat the same team three times in the same season. Right? Bears done it. just did it against the Huskies. Right? It's like hard to do. They just did that, but. I don't know. The Huskies aren't the same Huskies that we were generally used to seeing. I was going to uh, send uh, Coach Chris Morris. I I watched that la- the UBC game. I watched it on CanadaWest.tv. You can buy those games. It's actually like two, two cents. cents right? Two cents. Yeah. It, it's not two cents. Oh no, not Canada West TV. I, I'm thinking Telus. Telus oh, is two cents yeah, for pay per view if they My show. Bad. My Canada bad. West TV is, uh, but they don't show all the games, right? No, Canada, Canada West TV, you get nine all bucks, the sports. So like, yeah, you get all the sports. You get everything. You can buy the U of A sports pass at the start of the year for like fifty bucks. Okay, and you can watch hockey, basketball, volleyball, football, whatever you men's, want. Women's, men's, women's, all of everything. It. But I was watching that UBC game, and at the end of that game, there is a really good clip that Chris should. Coach Chris Morris should probably cut and show his players during film this week is the reaction of the Thunderbirds on the sideline because at at Footfield, you're right in front of the stands, mm-hmm. the the opposing team, and there was some there are very motivational uh, things happening that that might re- get the boys a little fired up. Uh, Interesting coming game time. So, Chris, uh, I know you're a listener, and uh, I'm gonna cl- I'm gonna clip that for you. I'm gonna find that. And like, you got to show the fellas that because they might get a little excited. Let's just say that. I like this. I'm curious to know what it is. And not only are you the EST glue guy, you're the Golden Bears glue guy, too. Well, you know, it's it, it, I do wear many a hat. Yeah, you, you do. Know, um, Wildcats glue guy. Hey, the um, Wildcats toque you got me is phenomenal. They're nice toques. Oh, they so were to the Bears game on the weekend. Yeah. They are nice toques. I took it out. They're very warm. took out the puppy this morning, and it was cold out there, but I had the toque, and I was good. Okay, because yeah. they are uh, fleece lined or something. On the yeah, inside, they are. Right? They're phenomenal. I'm trying to find rankings. Sorry, that's what I'm on my phone for right CIS now. CIS rankings? Not, yeah. There's the ELO rankings, but I don't think that's the actual rankings. Yeah, I think I think it I think is going to be a, a, a battle yeah, this this weekend. How, it's going to be tough. How are the U of A? Uh, How is it secondary? Like, are they ball hawks? If if this Jonathan Justini is also their place kicker. Yeah, I was and noticing that this weekend. I saw him make. I was it a pick or a knockdown or something, and then also saw him on the sideline kicking. I'm like, yeah, is he, that the same person? Yes, it is the same person. Number two, he's a hell of an athlete. Hmm. Um, very very good range. Which so it's it's. Uh, he he's probably going to be the Canada West, you know, first first team All Star at safety, I would imagine. But it's just the depth that that UBC has at the receiver position that it's just pick your poison mm. kind of thing. Got an American death quarterback. Is this the guy Texas. that respects the Canadian game? I read an article yeah. on him. Yeah, that's him. Garrett Rooker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know how UBC does it. They keep. Well, doing this, I don't know. That I know that there's some stories around Blake Nell. Blake Nell, yeah. Uh, Apparently, yeah. He, well, you he's, know, he's broken rules. In the past, yeah, so. yeah. Potentially, maybe finding ways to convince players to come up here it up. Just like, well, it's it's like the Portland Winterhawks, mm. similar type things, you know. There's lots of and perks playing for the Winterhawks. There's the story. <laughs> there's some stories out there about Blake Nell and UBC with that. I gotcha. Well, it's the same. You know, it's uh, when. The Mike Babcock thing came up where there's smoke, there's generally fire, right? Yeah. So in this case with with Blake Nell, there has been like there have been uh errors made and, yep. and uh overspending that has been documented, but C- the CIS t- turns U Sports. U Sports. Jeez, I'm aging myself. U Sports, <laughs> you know, CIAU turn- baby over here. CIAU, C-I-A-U. there you go. Yes. Turns a blind eye. Uh, I don't know why. But why does he turn a blind eye? No, the that, CIA oh. or CIS U Sports because he's building a nice program out there. He's built an, and he and he is he is a great coach. Like I'm gonna take all that aside. He does. He's an like everything he's done with the Dinos and the Thunderbirds. It's awesome. Like yeah. he's just a strong football coach for Canada. A hundred percent university football. A hundred percent. So you'd think he, yeah. Maybe they don't want that. You think that damage maybe to go, the U uh, Sports maybe. Oh, because, like, like, you know, there's this big story going on with Michigan down south right now with sign stealing and everything. And well, That's just a load of crap, to why? be honest. Sign stealing? The, every if you team, send someone... Yeah, that's called gamesmanship, man. If you want to put this card up and do this and that, 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 make all these signals, 
and I watch it and I make a database of all your signals and what play you're running, that's called gamesmanship. But it's how you get those signs. Yeah, you sneak you you, send sneak people to the stadiums. some other game and f- do it that way. I think that it's it's like the Astros with baseball. Sign stealing has been part of baseball forever. Sure. No one has an issue with the Astros stealing signs. It was how they went about doing it, bringing technology into us. And that's not, is that not the issue with what's being alleged in well, Michigan? It's in, if you're how saying they've gone technology, about like this guy in the stand is doing this and, and filming these, these calls, I just, I think it's, I think it's getting on sidelines. Wasn't he? No, he was in the stands. Was that? And it? he was filming across the field to the opposing sideline and, and what they're, you know, because in in college football, in CIS, in junior football, you get game footage of every game. And it's broken down, play by play. This was the first and ten they ran. This play, it was complete for eight yards. Second and two. And, and you So if you have somebody in the stands going through the plays and recording what is coming in, and then you sync that to the game, the game. footage you that you have... Out. It's not, and I and there's nothing illegal about that. I mean, there are things called headsets. Mm-hmm. Every a lot of teams use those too, where you Blake Nell does not. No, I, I learned the, which I was found weird because you don't see a lot of coaches not. But sorry, side there. Well, there's headsets, and and a lot of times it's a headset where necessarily not necessarily the coach is going is calling the entire play, but he's saying 41, 41, and the quarterback. So. There's ways around it. If you if you don't want your signs stolen, then join the 21st century and, and get a headset and or change your signs. Or, I mean, I I just don't. Yeah, signs just don't need to th- be a thing. Yeah, I hate the the big placards teams put up college teams, and we're seeing it sometimes in the pros too. It's like, what are you doing? Seen a little bit of the Elks game this year yeah. against the Owls. Yeah, we're seeing a couple that. big signs being thrown yeah, up. I'm like that. I've never seen that at a CFL game before. I know. And I don't. I just don't get it. I mean, uh, the Wildcats, for goodness sake, use a headset, and the offensive coordinator calls the play in and just. But are there the still not signs to be have to be? Said? If you're like, if you're audibling, like the quarterback can audible, and you know. But there's like some, when like I watch an Elks game, let's say they have headsets, they're clearly sending the call in through the headset, but they're still sending signs defensively. Defensively, is that only it? Yeah, but aren't they headset it up? They like, can be, but and I don't know why that's a thing. Either, but defensively, yes, you're you're doing play like signaling. Um, now, defensively, it's a little bit different because a lot of defense is reaction, so you're not necessarily going to get a look at oh they were definitely in cover three here or they were you know doing a strong side run blitz or or whatever because it's not, oftentimes that gets blown up and changes on the fly. So, but yeah, sign stealing. I don't know. I just. I don't see it being a big, big issue, and and it's just I don't know. Michigan, Ohio State. Are I can't both wait. In the top like, four. I can't wait for that game in a couple of weeks. I like the gamesmanship of sign stealing mm-hmm. baseball, football. You see something in hockey, whatever. But how you go about doing it, like when the Astros did it. Remember they they thought that uh, Altuve had a little buzz thing. He did. Yeah, there's like, a reason. There's a reason he didn't want that jersey ripped off yeah. as he hit the game winning, and yeah. I don't care that he's like, he's body shy. Or that's, not a chance. That's greasy. That's greasy. That's like there's a. It, it shouldn't be this way, but there is a bit of a threshold, and once you cross that line, it's greasy and and. The well, that's just outright caught. cheating. Yeah, yeah. Like that that is pretty um, pretty greasy. Just back to the Bears. Do you think they could beat UBC? Yes, I think you're accurate in saying the Hardy. Well. Not the Hardy Cup. Yeah, the did I say Hardy? I meant Mitchell. Mitchell Bowl, Bowl Mitchell will be in. here at Foot Field. What was it like playing in Hardy Cups? Uh, it feel incredible. Was it? Yeah, we played in two. Where'd you play? Uh, like where, they weren't here. One where, was. Was it? One was. That's the last time it was here. Was the that Hardy Foot Cup. Field or was it built yet? Yeah, it was Foot yeah, Field. Yeah, it was Foot Field. It okay. was Foot Field. It was oh five. Well, that was the last home playoff game I know. It was 05, and, so yeah. um, we hosted the Huskies here, and they beat us in the last. Uh, like end of game winning drive. Mm, damn, Steve Bilan, Jerry Friesen uh, coach. Jerry Friesen was the head coach, and then the year before we lost the Hardy Cup in Simon Fraser. Okay, yeah, in Burnaby, that stadium is beautiful. I think Canada Soccer does some stuff there. I think that might be like one of their main facilities. I'm not sure, but a gorgeous, gorgeous. 
it's like Thunderbird Stadium, like at UBC. Mm-hmm. It's literally it's one of the nicest stadiums in the world. It's just beautiful. You're literally, and from the stands, you're overlooking beautiful tall trees, and then out to the ocean. Oh, like, UBC's man. campus is right on an ocean. Like it's right on no, an ocean. It's right on the ocean. Yeah, and that's okay, I guess. Just if that's below, your thing. <laughs> yeah, if you're into oceans, but funny and, and beauty and all of this and oddly, nature. Oddly enough, here's a funny story. When I played Team Alberta football, this would have been in 1999. Because back then you'd have the North versus South Bowl. Yeah. And from that, they'd put together Team Alberta. And Team Alberta would go to the Canada Cup. So I played on the North Bowl, then got selected to go uh, to Team Alberta. And we went out, the Nationals were in BC. So we practiced in BC. Uh, Obviously, we are housed on campus. Okay. And, you know, obviously there's quite a bit of downtime. So there was a fella on our team. His name was Mike. I don't know his last name, but we called him Chewy, Chewbacca, because he was massive, massively tall. He's probably six foot six and there's hair everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. So Chewy and I were put up to the task because <laughs> the beach that's right below UBC is called Wreck Beach. Now, for anybody that knows what Rec Beach is, uh, it's a nude beach, <laughs> okay? And it's not like uh, I don't know how to say this. It's not like, hey, let's go look, let's go down to the nude beach, and it's it's honestly where uh, it, a strange crew hung out at Rec Beach. Uh, there's a nude beach by Devon. Are you seriously? River. Yeah, they're not far from there. Uh, when I've gone on the boat with you and stuff on the River Valley, we've, there's a spot where it's known that this is where the new and beach is. And guaranteed, you points it out every time. Oh yeah. Oh well, because like you're like well, when the first time I was like, there's the new beach. Like, oh, geez, there it is. Yeah. So by the way, there is one in Edmonton. Continue. Yeah. So, not. Uh, it, it, anyways, strange. You know, interesting place. Okay. So Chewy and I were put up to the task for fifty dollars. <laughs> That's what it took. Team, the boys on the team put together their shekels and it was fifty dollars. No total. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> twenty five. It was a fifty dollar pot <laughs> that we would walk down Wreck Beach, gear down, completely nude, and hold hands and walk <laughs> the, the length of the beach and back. So obviously we did it, right? Duh. I mean, you're and he didn't care, I didn't care. I we you're thought it was twenty five bucks. It was it was all about the money, but the people on Wreck Beach like sniffed it out pretty quick. They knew we were not mocking them, but they knew we were we weren't <laughs> you weren't legit. there for the spirit. We weren't you, yeah. You weren't there for the spirit of the beach. Yeah. It was like <laughs> it was like when you didn't allow my Wolf of Wall Street pick in the draft because you said it wasn't in the spirit of, of the draft. Wow. Yep. Kind of the same vibe down at Wreck Beach with Chewy oh, and I. Oh boy. So this is just the history of yours. You're just trying to break rules. You know, I, I like to push the envelope. What can I say? You know? Did you get chased out like you had your pick nullified? No, we we that pick stayed. We got the money. We won. Damn, we came good. through, and then we ended up uh, we ended up losing to BC in the final. Damn BC! And BC was BC was good. Just BC always was good. quite strong. And it was yeah, at the old BC place on that turf, that oh, well, Astro turf. Is it like concrete? Everyone it's said it was brutal. horrible. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Like yeah. that place was like walking into like the world's largest building like it was just so massive and there was like 50 people in the stands nah. right <laughs> so it was, a, it was a little bit uh devoid of, of of humans but it was pretty cool but that that astroturf was just the worst well there was issues in the 2015 world cup women's world cup when because they had artificial and i think they've changed it since then but that one there the the, the females were having big problems with it because it just wasn't a strong one. place yeah, and yeah. it helped really that also get led a big push because back in 15 which again isn't that long ago no but the men's world cup was known it cannot be played somewhere without natural grass right they've since changed that a little bit i think when they went to russia there was one facility that had like a, a hybrid type thing um but the women were allowed to play on natural grass they I didn't care that. and then that was kind of the big turning point where we we're like well if men only get natural grass. Why don't we get natural mm-hmm. grass? And that eventually, I think, led to a change after the 15 World Cup. But Vancouver was a big part of that because it was it was bad. Like, yeah. and they 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 really had issues with the potential of injuries and just it wasn't wasn't fit. That was the last year they changed the turf at Commonwealth. Mm-hmm. That's almost 10 years ago. They need new turf there soon. Yep. Speaking of that, 
Um, there's a lot of tra- there's a lot of discussion right now on on what goes into a perfect Caesar. I do tell. So I'm, I mean, if, let, if me, these are, let me text. Lucas. You're, you're following the nasty chat. So yeah. that's if you're making your own. Like obviously, oh, okay. it's simple. Go get a Mott's Clamato Caesar at a store. It's good to go. Yeah. You're ready. That's 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 how I'm going to take a Caesar. The pickled bean. It's great. Is the real deal. I think if between the three of them that are there in front of me, pickled bean is just outstanding. You're feeling it. Spelling it. Now this, Caesar. Yeah, I know. Is it A E or E? And like, it's an A R. It's A E S A R. Lucas, your buddy. Well, uh, I don't know if I'd call him my buddy. Bears fan. Uh, <laughs> I know, brother I... of Lucas, of uh, Lieutenant Eric. Bassist of Whale and the Wolf. Uh, hangout uh, member in a couple weeks. It was supposed to be Friday, but now he's going to be called. Oh, he's weeks. pushing it back. Okay. Um, but he is. No he loves Bears, his Bears Caesars. Fan. Loves his Caesars. Yeah. Loves them. Short glass with gin. Um, but he he's known for doing videos. Oh, on, I've seen him on on Twitter. So I'm, I've yeah. just texted him to see what his ideal Caesar is. What is your ideal Caesar? My ideal Caesar? Yes. Uh, yes. I. It's got to have a lot of rim, like the the salt. salt. The By the salt. way, uh, Jay Mill and Tom's old Matawana with you here on the EST Hango. I like the the more um, edgy the the rim, you know, like gritty, the better. I do really you get like because like, uh, you could just do like the regular drink salt, but no, do, I like, you have like, to get like the volcanic. Black. Yeah, like you, like know what's, you have to get a special. Seriously, there's, no, I love it. I just no. Okay, here, that's here's, what it here's, looks like. And I think I don't know if it's, it's the technical name. I don't it, drink but. Caesars a lot, but when I do, it's usually on a ski trip. I don't know why, but my my cousin makes a really good Caesar, and here's what's in it. Yeah, it's rimmed with Montreal steak spice. Oh, wow. Okay, See, that's a good start. It is, and it's got some edge to it. It's got yeah, some grit, some sandpaper. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a vodka Caesar. Okay, but uh, I'm a heavy, like I'm a little bit more dirty, so a little bit more Worcestershire, mm-hmm. and obviously Tabasco, but horseradish. Ah, no. In Lost me. The Caesar. Mm. <laughs> Lost me already. Oh, I really? Hate horseradish. Oh, I man. Hate horseradish. Yeah, that's gritty. I can't it do is. horseradish. It, 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 uh, it's, yeah, it is gritty. gritty. It gets you ready for the hill. Do you What's have your... To- Per, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, do you have to have like? I know that they get crazy with Caesars now, like a pepperoni. Stick. Well, that's, that's where. I, oh, what's that's your garnish? Yeah. What's uh, if you had to add to garnish candy to bacon? Put this off, that's not a bad one. Yeah, I know. I've seen like donuts on them. Something. Yeah, like, I did a burger. Get once. out of here! I've wow. seen the burger Caesar. Yeah, full burger one. They brought it to yeah. the old station. Me and JMO. It was it was nice. It was a full burger. Basically, that's you're just meal. ordering your burger and getting a Caesar, but it's just in one, and the burger's just on top of your Caesar for that presentation. Yeah, I would say like a. Thin, uh, thin strip of beef jerky. That's not a bad one. That's like, cool. Yeah, yeah. and then you can also use know. it as a stir stick. But the to the to go the pickled bean is just exceptional. Sure. They have a gin one too. Mott's, Mott's Clamato. Yeah, it's no a way. gin Caesar, and it's I think there's a cucumber one as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm sure the next round that we get in here because there's a lot of that here in the studio. Gin and cucumber. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get no some way. Of that. There's a Chipotle lime limited edition. See, I like Chipotle a lot. They have a reserve cucumber basil. Uh, they have right, a, it's basil. Sorry. I'm kidding. Limited edition sriracha. They have a gin and cucumber. Gin and um, cucumber. It is pickled bean. There's a lime. Good. Spicy. Interesting. St- the works. That looks good. The original. Wow. There's actually some. I want to try that. Uh, the Chipotle lime. I think that's I, good. Chipotle and I just, boo, we don't get along. No. Okay. Mm-mm. So Lucas. I love Chipotle. His, your buddy, Caesar, yeah. a good amount of gin, <laughs> regular celery salt rimmer, nothing fancy, short glass, medium spice, a little on the dirty side with the Worcester, but not black, clam for color, and either a few olives or a pepperoncini or a pepperoni stick or all three. Man. Also a splash of pickle juice. That's a there. flavor yeah, explosion. The pickle juice is nice. The pickle juice is a nice touch. Do you know you can get pickle flavored vodka, right? Yes. Like dill pickle vodka or whatever. Yeah, there was oh, uh, really? there's a distillery in Nisku, Big Rig, Rig Hand, Rig Hand Rig Distillery. Hand. That's right. Uh, they did that, and then, and it's partly made specifically well, for it's a Caesar's, Caesar drink for, for the sure. Caesar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like if you want to do it to get that, because it just saves you some time of mixing a Caesar. Like I've done pickle backs, but that's whiskey chased with pickle juice. Thank God, because whiskey on it. Whoever buys Jameson or any kind of whiskey for their friends, you're the devil. 
You're the devil. I love whiskey. You know what? Whiskey's Every- great, but it packs a punch. Didn't you say this morning? Oh, you're like, whiskey you're and whiskey. I don't get no. no yeah. Mm-mm. I, mm-mm. Mm-mm. So you don't, you won't take Can't whiskey. go there. Uh, you won't take the whiskey. No. I know. You want to see like me transform into the Incredible Hulk? Give well, me, I do want to Give me that. whiskey. I do want yeah. to see that. I, you've now just enticed me when the ESC to get goes, this free. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't. We don't mix. It's yeah. like oil and water. Don't. Mm-mm. There's so many people in the chat, and I feel bad. Um, there's so many people just craving a Caesar at well, 9.46 in the morning. Oh, it's yeah. A, I was about to say, go, get, go to the liquor store, but the stores aren't open yet. Not, you got to wait 15 minutes, and the stores will be open. Or come by the hangout. We'll, we'll yeah, gladly we'll, we'll those are ours. give you. Don't just give away our Caesars. I've noticed there's the boxes are we're yeah, running they, low. They like, were they're, full. They're well, crushed. we moved them towards the fridge. So they could be cool. And That's these great. are our show me Caesars. Yeah, no, I know. You need those like, ones there. You need those. And they, Actually, they look good on, on camera. I don't think the camera would see if they're opened or not. So we could put empty cans That's there. That's true. And drink those. I wonder how many ourselves. Caesars my daughter's had out there. <laughs> She's playing Mario. <laughs> so oh, did we Mario get that working? Through. Yeah, it's yeah. Mario Party yeah, working. That's great. Yeah. I That's, told her uh, yeah. she was... So it's it's winter break. So I I text the the head honchos here at EST last night, and I said I was asleep, fellas. And I don't know. Okay, let's let's talk. About I woke that. up to these a couple texts from him, and it was it was like nine o'clock. He texted me still though, but I was out early last night. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about it this in yes. open because this is the hangout, and we like to we like to talk about things that maybe are uncomfortable to talk about. But oh, I've never been known to talk about those things. Here's the question: Was it off? And because you didn't answer me, Dusty did. So I won't say Dusty's answer until you guys have spoken. Okay. In my world where I have a furniture store, it is totally up to me to whether I bring my daughters to work with me. And I often do. If I'm working a Sunday uh, and I, because, you know, otherwise it's, you know, I don't really get to see them. So bring them into work with me. It's totally okay. Customers come in and they think it's great. Mm -hmm. Because here are your daughter. Is it? Faux pas. I no. mean, there's not very many kids around this office. I think Dusty and I would be the only one with kids, right? Yeah. But is it faux pas for me? That to- we know of. <laughs> <laughs> Was oh, it, yeah. is it? Is it allowed? <laughs> is this? Is this? Uh, did I? I think it's great. No. Okay. Okay. We have no issues. Like, it's an open door. Okay. Like, we have, come on in. We have that. We're, we want to get the full arcade machine we're big going. Kids. We're uh, old it, kids. Actually, yeah, the true. thing okay. is, is that it's actually more. Are you okay with your daughter being here where there's a bunch of drinks just sitting there? You're not in here. I offered her <laughs> water. And I said, oh, we there's have beer some back other there. things just sitting by. Yeah. Like th- so that's the real question oh, is, no, are you okay uh, having around us well, where we're keep doing... In, keep in mind. We're is, talking about drinking Caesars at 9.45 in the morning. Yeah. Keep in, keep in mind, I'm, I am her dad. <laughs> and B, Fair. she is one of the water chicks on the Wildcat sideline. So, oh, nice. is she? Vocabulary is uh, very, very she knows. broad. At nice. This point. She's got a okay. great yeah. vernacular. She knows what she's, a good word is and what a swear word is. She's seasoned and, in. And she knows the, the spicy right language. swear words to use. Yeah. She knows not, just like, how to push my buttons with a, with a oh, few of them. You know what? She oh. just she seems very comfortable. Well, she brought she her book. She right in. Yeah, she's yeah. good to go. I'm she like, brought her book. She's ready to go. I don't read enough, and I want to. I just never... Sit I down never and take like the read. thirty minutes. Well, you do read a lot because you're on Twitter a lot. But well, reading different. books, I should you say. Mean so sorry, books. To, no, I have to I have to be dead on perfect there. Yeah, reading of books. Yeah. Well, no, I, I like I read nice. Yeah. I read about a good amount of articles online. Like I do that stuff, but not actually just sitting down and reading a book. Me neither. I used to. I read. There was a while. There was a moment in my life when I got into John Grisham books. My dad's being into John Grisham books, and I couldn't put them down. Them. They are very, very. I don't know. I think it's a niche. Niche, whatever you Both of those work. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and down niche. south, they say niche. Up here, we say niche. Niche. I've yeah. always said niche, but I hear niche. It's both. So mm. go niche. I think Christian... cacophony, cacophony. Well, I don't know what that means. Tomato, tomato. That one I know. What was potato, the other one? Potato, potato. What was the other one? Now I'm getting silly. What was the first one? Cacophony. I never heard of cacophony. that. Cacophony. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, we're getting... Uh, people we're are saying that they... they Trade out vodka for whiskey in a Caesar? In a Caesar? No. Ooh, wouldn't that like no. overwhelm it? Well, it would just taste like no. whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Whiskey is a very overwhelming flavor. It is. I vodka, used to love rye. I used to love rye. Whiskey with a splash of water. It's all you need. And it would just. I like would, oil I would reserve? R and R? No, it would be crown. It had crown. to be crown. And then like any bourbon, you you turn into the Hulk, I turn into just the maniac. I turn into like carnage from spider-man 
Bourbon, yeah. yeah. If anyone ever brings in Crown Royal Peach, I will always drink it. I will never turn you down like Crown that. Royal. I, I, when when I just love peach apple, in almost I didn't anything. Like it. Crown Royal Peach is... You didn't like the apple? I like the maple. Uh, maple I, I, see, I feel like Crown Royal, too. They Remember don't... that was like a thing? Yeah. When like the maple was like, it's sold out, yeah. you can't find the maple. Yes. Yeah. And that was the same thing when like Bud Light Lime came out. Those are right. great. Those are, right? good, golf, are good. Those are good golf course beers. Yeah, great those, golf course yeah. beers. And you know what? I had one like last summer. And I was like, damn, like, I forgot about these. It's good. They are good. Yeah. Like, especially, yeah, like golf course, mowing your lawn, something like that. When just you're outside. Something crisp and refreshing. Yes. yes. 100%. New can yeah. um, But just the peach, it's those. just, I don't know, there's, it's it's not overpowering. And again, I'm just a sucker for the flavor of peach. Yeah. And when they announced that, it was supposed to be a limited edition or something. Yeah. And now it's just full time. And Sp- I will like. Standard run. Yeah. you you Somebody brings Crown Royal Peach in every day. And says you want a shot, I'm like, give me three. Yeah, really? Like I just oh, you would just drink it I'd meat or on the rocks. Give me just a splash of water, like a splash couple of water. drops of yeah. water that brings out that flavor a little bit more. Boom! I could just drink that you really one. Couldn't really drink it with Coke. The only thing no. you could drink. The other thing is iced tea. Mm. Put that into iced tea. That's a delicious. See, but that's the way to do Crown the, Royal Peach. The one that could get me, especially in the summer, around golf courses, or you're just out for a nice day, is I'm a sucker for like two hoots. You know, mm-hmm. spiked iced tea. Like I love that stuff. Spiked lemonade. I just we just I uh, like just threw the boxes. box of uh, two hoots in the fridge outside. The it's box, like box, the box wine. Box yeah, wine. Dusty. Yeah. I love it. I had exp- like I was, they're doing. There's a new Achy Breaky podcast coming. Yeah, and they usually have two hoots while they're doing it. And I don't think we have any more cans. I'm like, you guys should probably put the box in the fridge, right? To get ready and like get it chilled yeah. for you guys. And Dusty's like, I don't know how to open it. There's a but so, like it's like, there's a little tab by that this morning it. before the show started and I just went and I just cracked it open pulled out the spout found the spout pulled it out and it's like that's that's all you have to do it's, it's very hard. simple Dusty. and then I threw it in the fridge so now we got four liters of two hoots ready I'll to be go some of which that. is pretty dangerous except Dusty's gonna be scared that it's gonna get poisoned because he's scared about anything apparently going in there being poisoned I have no idea why he's where did that start interesting. I don't know all I said today because he was he's been Damon Bunting brought us a bunch of waters yep. And he'd been drinking those waters. And I was like, well, those are kind of nice to have when guests show up as opposed to oh, yeah. us just pounding but, them and, all back. And we were but doing the post-game show the other night, pre and post, and Trev and I are like, look at this. I'm like, one like wounded soldier, Damon oh, Bunting no. water bottle there, one over there. I'm like, look at what Dusty does. He just so, leaves them all around. And then next to where you're sitting doing the post-game show yeah. is his big water bottle. Right, That is the floor. full of like three quarters of water. And he's like, I can't drink all that one day. I was like, okay, well, why don't you just start it, fill it up, Drink what you can for the Amazing. day and throw it in the fridge. Yeah. So keep it cool. The next day you come, you can finish it off. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden he's like, I'm going to get poisoned. You he's know like, what the Why problem are you getting is? poisoned from this? You know what the problem know. is? Is the waters are free, right? What should happen with the Damon Bunting water is there should be a. Well, uh, we're down to those. Uh, so now we just got other, bo- we got regular waters. Damon, we need water. Yeah. Damon's in, I think, Mexico on a family trip, but I know he's watching and or listening right now. So good message. Yeah. Get it yeah. over here. Let's go. Get uh, Devin, your assistant, to bring some over. Yeah, but you pay. pay? Yeah, put but in a put in like a that. put in like a what do you, what do you call it? Like a Coke pop machine. But we can't do that. Why? Because he's the boss. Well, once he, he starts, can get away from all, once that, he, he could starts do it all. paying for his own damn water. But he's he not going to pay for it because he's allowed to get around it, or it's his money. He just takes the money instead. However, he needs to do it. I think if there was some payment form here he would respect the water because you're wasting water like he was using the, the he was water. using his water bottle for a bit and then all of a sudden he just stopped and it's sitting there and it's i know right next man. to him there's like 15 water bottles like, laying around i threw them out for do him. you want to know something uh, uh back at 1260 he had a, a smaller water bottle i think it was actually golden bears water bottle yeah i remember golden bears pants. i always had to move it when i did filled in for him on the ctv well hits. every day jama would come in before his show he'd walk into the studio say hi to eric say hi to dusty grab dusty's water bottle go fill it up with water bring it back for dusty that's the only reason Dusty was drinking waters at twelve sixty was because Jamo would fill Man, it up for him. Jamo's so good. So I think maybe that's an issue is that we don't have Jamo right now here on a regular basis. We need Jamo, and he's not filling up the water to give Dusty fresh water. Dusty's so forty two years ones. old. Why does he need Jamo doing it for him? I, I appreciate Jamo doing it for him. Water is if you water is very good to, to to have in your life. It is. I've been told it's almost, that. Yeah. I've almost been told essential. That. <laughs> You'd think. Yeah. What is your body? 90 some percent water? It's quite a bit of so, Something like water. that. Yeah. You so, know, essentially, you kind of need think you could yeah. run some of that in there. It's, um, but yeah, now we have a two hoots, four liter in the fridge. Oh, I'll be that, um, that. 
I might need isn't it for uh, the oil stream later isn't today. Smart. Ah, that's going to be an easy show. Yesterday was just a day. Wow, it was fun. Oh, I, it was, it's you, it, we didn't, it was it's just, fun. It's honestly now become a fun thing for me. Sorry. but No, don't to be. To tune I'm in glad. after and just see the well, ambush that Tommy has I to love deal it. with. Well, but also his real. eyes, you can see his eyes are just going back and forth. The, the waver of waving of Campbell yesterday, like at noon, it yeah. was just like, okay, here we go. Like now this is going to set people off. And it was just, it was a day yesterday because like we talked about it on the yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah. but the idea of maybe send him down, pick up Pickard and all that. But the fact that we all sat there and went, maybe they should do this. Still, when you saw it happen. Hey, they actually did it. It, it was like, oh, they did this. Well, they had yeah. to do something. And I, I would have to think, though, then in the locker room, you know, I think there's questions, does this really resonate? It wasn't, you know, that he's not. I think I, it might. It's a if, warning if, shot. If for us, as everyone else who's been kind of saying, like, maybe this is an option, they should maybe do this. Yeah. Still to be like, oh, my God, they did this. Yeah. I would Absolutely. think that inside the locker room, that's going to resonate. Oh, boy. Our quote unquote starter or our five million dollar goalie, he's been placed on waivers because we've been crap. And he's been crap. Well, and, and we the, the in general, like as a general, yeah, yeah, like we, we chased them no out. No one of this has been no one yeah. could take credit of how well they're playing right now outside of maybe a cane has a Fogel. little bit. Like there's not a Kanye, lot of players yeah. right now that could look in the mirror and go in the last few games. Yeah, I, I I've been contributing right. mostly. Okay. So. I'm going to say something here. Yesterday. Oh, what are you going to say? Is this going to be groundbreaking? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not groundbreaking. Just, I, I was and it's an something. observation. Okay. Really. Give her. Like acknowledging the goalies have been bad among other elements. And we said this on the hangout yesterday. I just, you know, we talked for, I think it was like an hour and 15 minutes about the team and the situation. Yesterday was the perfect day for that, given what happened. But I was like, boys, like we, we talked about upper management, how it has failed middle tier and lower management, how it has failed. The coaching staff has failed. The top six has failed. The bottom six has failed. The defense has failed. The goaltending has failed. It's, it kind of, not surprised me, but I was just like, huh, really? This is what we're blaming it all on. When Jack Camel got sent down, I, I saw a lot of, man, the goalies are terrible. Yep, got to get rid of Jack Campbell. And I'm not disagreeing with that. It just seemed like, especially the night before, during the game when Stuart Skinner was starting and uh, and the team was losing, and then post-game, I saw a few tweets from other peers of ours in the media saying the goaltending just hasn't been up to snuff, which I agree with. But it was incredible how all the focus seemed to get diverted straight to the goaltending and to blame it all on the goaltending. It was like sharks were in the water. Let's call that oil country, media, fans, whatever, all in one pool, circling, waiting for the chum to be thrown off the boat. And the chum have to, happened to be the goaltending. And it seemed like that night, during the game, after the game, all the focus shifted right to the goaltending instead of the rest of the team playing like absolute dog, you know what, from the goalies. And I admit, the goalies have been bad. You're not getting that save. The goal, the first goal Campbell let in against Nashville, I hated. I watched the replay again this morning. I was like, that that's a terribly played goal. But it just seems like all of the attention and and as soon as that chum got thrown over the boat, the Sharks just chewed on the or were shoot, chewing on the goaltenders because. There's a few reasons I think that that's the case. Okay. One, it was the move that was made. Right. Like when that move happens, I mean, if, if James was, like, was fired yesterday, right everyone, everyone would be like, I, well, I think there'd but be a little more the split at that one. But too, Matty. I, well, so what, part of this I think goes back to is why did the Oilers not win the Stanley Cup last year? Well, their goaltending wasn't good. It, and they it, made it, stupid it, mistakes, right. took but bad But if they had average goaltending, they probably get past the Golden which Knights, the Golden Knights had. which means they probably win the Stanley Cup. So right there, it was goaltending into this season. It needs to be better. Jack yeah. Campbell needs to be improved. Stuart Skinner needs to be improved. I agree with that 100%. And of course. it's their play. Like, I think some people just look and go, if you had better goaltender, they have the worst save percentage as a oh, tandem they, in the oh, National Hockey I know. League. I read it out every night. And pre-game. it's just like that right there, then it's maybe the players are also not playing well in front of them because they have no confidence in the boy in the guys behind them. And that was an issue two. with Koskinen and Smith, too. And that's why you try this move here, and this is why maybe this is a big switch because if you get average goaltending, what does this hockey team look like? Yeah. Now, no, I, I I'm not that. taking away anything of the other problems for this. Yeah. 
Um, this is the first of what could be many moves to come. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think Frankie Corrado, I think, of TSN, he made up a good point yesterday on SportsCenter and he was talking about it and he says, if you're going to get AHL goaltend, then why not get an AHL goalie? <laughs> With, with, if you're bringing um, up picker, like if that's paid. what you're playing, then why not just go with an AHL guy and yeah. see what he can do, type of thing. Um, but that's where I think a lot of people are coming with the goaltending is that it's been bad. So is the defense, so is team defense, so is the lack of scoring, so is the PP not being as strong as it should be, so is some coaching decisions. Penalty There's a lot we terrible. could go to. But in the end, if we go back to from last season, what was the issue of why the Oilers were knocked out of the playoffs? The first issue and what's been longer has been goaltending. Yeah. And that's why people jumped on the goaltending. And it's but, not and like this season. They bit but, into okay, it. But, okay, of their, what's their record? Two, two eight, eight, and one. one. So yeah. we're at 11 games. Yeah. How many good games have they gotten from their goaltending? One? Two, two maybe. maybe? You could say Heritage Classic and then the game where Campbell made 43 saves. I think well, it, Skinner actually gave them I a think, decent yeah. game against the Rangers. So we're talking maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. three out of 11 from your goaltenders of yeah. good games. Maybe. They're not in the top 25. In save percentage or goals allowed, or no, no you know, like they're it's goal 25 tending. too. bottom of the yeah, barrel, man. It, it's it's goaltending, like that's that's the problem. Now, this team cannot fire Jay Woodcroft. That we we can't just you know, sorry to say, we the Oilers, oh, that's talk to him. The Oilers cannot, I'll keep let that doing one go. That. They can't keep doing Oh, but that. when my boys of Manchester United and we take the pitch today, you're gonna be all upset. He's the glue guy, he's got some, he's got <laughs> clout, man. Yeah, get off my back. Um, they can't keep doing that and changing and taking this out from underneath them. Is it Jay Woodcross, Woodcross' fault? Partly, yes. For what? How? System he's trying to implement hasn't worked. The defensive the players system? seem to not be responding right now. It seems like he has no answers. It seems Why in the isn't press Connor conference McDavid it looks being like like blasted right now? He's I don't supposed, know. There, I mean, there's some heat coming in now. Blasted, but him and Leon are getting more criticism I've ever seen in their time here in Edmonton with as little pushback that as I've ever seen. In the past, whenever Connor and Leon have been criticized or there's been any sort of even just a single texture to 1260 or whatever it might be, somebody on Twitter, a little attention drawn on them, immediately people jump on them and be like, it's not their fault. Right. And get off of them. Because they don't want to push this, them out of Edmonton. Well, they don't also wanna, they're yeah. putting up 100 and some points and they're doing a yeah. lot already. This season, because they're not putting up all those points because there's all these issues. This yeah. is the first year I would actually say, like, maybe they're not getting blasted. But there's heat. But there is heat being yeah. a little put on them. For sure there is. And it's having the least amount of resistance from people saying, back off of those boys. Yeah. But there needs to be, I mean, you said it. The top six is dog you know what. The bottom six is dog you know what. Yeah. I mean. You keep going. If uh, goaltending. Yeah. So this is why you fire the coach because you can't change all that with a snap of the finger. That's you, can't, you can't take Cody CC and um, I mean, who who do they have that would be considered a top four defenseman on other teams in the league? At home. It's at home. That's it. I'll, I'll just nurse reluctantly. And people four. don't like that. Yeah. Maybe but, not a number one, but I would throw Nurse four. as a top yeah. four. And then CC could saying. slide into a four. Wait, Bouchard's playing no, but Bouchard no, should, no, be no, top, should be a top should four. Be. Should be. Okay, here's where and I is are two different things. Here's what I would counter with in the coach. Like, if it's not the coaching fault, then you have to be an organization that's willing to accept the fact that you may miss the playoffs this year or things might not happen in the playoffs because you're sticking with this coach and you can't change all these players during the season and it's going to have to be a process between this season and off season this year to get the team better yeah. for next year. But, and is the fan base and is this organization ready to switch from cup or bust mentality to next year? No. But... So do then you, you got to make a coaching change. But okay, if this, this keeps is going, the same yeah. team. Yeah. Just don't forget, this is the same team that went to the... Western Conference Final last year, mm -hmm. right? Two years ago. Two years. Or two, sorry, then, two years ago. Yeah. Last year was second round, right? The same team. So it's not that they all of a sudden stink and can't play hockey, right? Something's just off. Don't know what it is, but something's awry. Now, are they going to find that? Is that does something like this? You know, putting Campbell on waivers and and sending him down to the, is that? the click that this team needs to to get their asses in gear and start figuring this out because that's what you know firing a coach does or that's why you oftentimes after a coach is fired and you see the the you know the assistant head coach come in and be a co take over as a head coach you see them rattle off some victories right mm -hmm. because it's a kick to, it's a kick in the nuts and say hey guys let's get this turned around because because of your crappy play 
this fellow's on his way down to the farm team. Mm-hmm. So it, is that the move that happens? Because there needed to be something. Yes. And it couldn't... I, I'm very thankful that they didn't just throw the towel in on Jay Woodcroft. I don't think so that would have been a smart move. Jay, honestly, and, and, I, and I, I'll reiterate this, he shouldn't be fired. However... That's the easy way out. There is the little bump you get after a coach has changed out. And the natural thing, especially when you have limited options for any team in any sport, is usually you look at the head coach. Which I'm going to say, that it is also paired with the GM in this. It, yeah. If the Oilers keep losing and, and there has to be a change with the coach. Yeah. Like, to me, it's also the change with the GM. Because and that, I'm always of the mentality that, okay, GM comes in, they hire a coach. A GM gets one firing. Usually. He's got his firing. Now, it, to me, it goes to the GM. But this, it, because it's midseason, I'm tying the two yeah. together. Um, but that's where, like, this is such a delicate spot the Oilers are in. Because I'm with you, Jim. Like, this was a good hockey team the last couple of years. Conference finals, losing to the uh, Cup champs, ultimately the back-to-back years. I don't think Clem Costin, Kyler Yamamoto, Yesapolya Yarv, Nick Bugstad, who am I missing? I guess Tyson Berry. I don't think they're the key differences of to why this team isn't as good this year as they were last year. I, I don't. They think, would be nice to it, have. It would be nice to have. I think this team would be a little bit better, but right? I think it's the yeah. difference between the Oilers being 30th and being 5th in the league. No. Um, but so you have to be, as, as an organization, are you comfortable going about this season, letting it play out, hoping that they figure it out and get things going again, but that meaning a risk of this season not being successful in any way, shape, or form, or do you try kickstarting a cup or bust season? And that's that's the delicate balance the Oilers are in. If this was two years ago, or I guess last year, even like well, I guess I'm, I can't put it those ones because the the coaching changes recently happened. But <laughs> that, that that's that's just where I look at it is if they've called this cup or bust from Leon Drysaddle. Yeah, Ken Holland said things before that they're it's in they're in their Stanley Cup window. Yeah, they're oh, good. Yeah. They're supposed to be good. But at what point do you allow that to? Do you have to put that aside and go? We need to get this season going. And opposed to What's let's the let option, them play though? through. What's the other option? They don't have. They For don't really have a choice right now. They, it is. Let's figure this out and let's turn it around and get on the right track. Well, coach is the other option. Firing Jay Woodcroft. Bringing in to me, I'll, I'll throw Gerard Gallant straight up. There's no one else I would do it for. Almost that that's sitting out there. Yeah. I and like, I, I don't want to hear that, another Matthew. name. I really do. Yeah. Again, they shouldn't hmm? be in this position. They've put themselves. Into this position, blame deserves to be spread all around because it's they have over. failed. You look at every level of, again, and we're like, "That was bad. That this element of the team is bad. That element, so any element of the team right now, is bad." That you point out. I think the wor- the biggest, the worst element though, would probably be our defensive zone. Oh, coverage. it's pathetically like, bad. I mean, there you can't get through a period of Oilers hockey without seeing. 10, 15 tweets rattled off about how bad that pinch was by Bouchard or what was CeCe thinking on this. You know, there is times where it looks like they've literally never played defense or played the game of hockey. Yeah. You know, yeah, letting, changed. letting, I don't know. So I, I don't know. Well, there's three things. Maybe it's I'm, pairings. Maybe it's something like that where it's just not meshing with the guys you're playing with. It could be a system thing. Yes, we've talked about that. It could be just the no trust in your goaltending. Yes, that's fair. It true. also could be that this team is good when Matthias Ekholm is with this team, but he's not healthy enough yeah. to be able to have the proper pairings or everyone's placed in the right spot because Matthias Ekholm can't play the way we'd, you'd like Matthias Ekholm because he's still battling his groin hip, whatever yeah. the other thing is. And you could say. counter that argument with in a small window of time, again, you should be able to patch it together. Should. And they didn't have a Matias Ekholm until the last 20 games of last year. And they were still a pretty good team. Ekholm got here, helped push them into one of the best teams going down the stretch, obviously. Like, it's it's I, baffling. But, then the, but at the same time, you could look at all these elements and be like, well, okay, here's a domino that fell, knock down this, this, and this. And you're like, yeah, okay. But good teams figure out ways to stop the bleeding. This This thing is hemorrhaging like crazy right now. And then that goes to something I think we talked about yesterday a little bit, and it goes then, okay, maybe this is straight up. They got demoralized from their loss to the Golden Knights. And that, that's that crushed that's being this team weak potentially, mentally, I think. Well, but that's, well, look at the game against the, what was the last team that they lost to? Why am I forgetting? Yeah. Who they, uh, uh, Vancouver. Thank you. Um, they were up one nothing. Once that first goal goes in, they just collapsed. 
Oh yeah, they, right. Like it's like they look so strong to start that game. They put up 19 shots. They had the lead, one nothing. Yeah, they're playing so well. One bad thing goes against them. One puck goes in the net, and all of a sudden it's a completely different hockey team. And so maybe there is some of that that this team, the Flames, got demoralized from the Oilers a couple of years ago. Like the Flames maybe, had huge changes in the off season too that sure. affected their. their but they should, maybe their the, the fact that they had leads in every single one of those games against the Golden Knights. Yeah. That, and they that, didn't win the series. They lost the series. They went to go win the cup. Maybe that demoralized the Edmonton Oilers and has led to this poor start for them. It should have pissed them off. And again, it makes me say, if that is the case, and I'm not saying it's not, they're mentally weak. Sure. 100%. And it, but, the, and what you're saying about the goals, you know, score, go up one nothing, then you know that the other team's coming back. Like they yeah. don't have that killer instinct, which is on their leadership. That comes from players, the leadership group of that team. Whoever that is, they need there needs to be a little bit more step on the throat mentality. I like step not on there. the throat mentality. It's not there. Yeah, you're right. And a little bit, you know, pissed off mentality. Yeah. Like play with a little bit of anger. It's the softest team right now because it it is it, I don't know, it's just discombobulated, but it, it does, I think, leadership. Defensive structure, defensive play. I mean, but it, it's not to say it's all for naught. Like, I think that this is not the time to panic and, and you know, sell the farm or fire the head coach. Or, I mean, I would look at the GM as the next possible thing. Yeah. And that would be the He's the got next a move. foot out the door. He will be gone. And there are people, just get rid of him now. They could do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yes, if they it wanted would to rattle him a bit. Yeah. If they wanted to make something that. Sure. But bottom line is, this is the same team that was successful last year. Yeah. So they just, something needs to, they need to, whether it's the defensive pairings, maybe Ekholm's a bigger deal than than his injury is is a bigger deal than we know, and it's really limiting his play. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe Connor McDavid's injured. We well, don't he know. Is, he, he is, you know, we know. Yeah. Like he's but maybe not. that's, what I'm saying is, maybe that's more than, than what we know. because well, What is his? It's a hip thing. It's an oblique. Which right. might not heal throughout the season. No, something you might have to play through all year, and it's a thing. summer that yeah. you need to heal because it doesn't. It's not going to heal through the hockey season if you keep playing. They have so thing. many days between games, though. Like that's the thing is the schedule is so spread out, especially in the it first. It won't be anymore. Three, well, until December twenty second and twenty third, where they play their first back to backs of the season. But there's still a lot of games coming up. Oh yeah, like they, 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 oh, right yeah. now they've it's had these like night. every so often, like three days off or whatever it might be. Or two days off, they'll be getting closer to one day off playing. You know, every second day having a game, and that's not helpful for this team moving forward. But like, if, if I, honestly, if this, if this, if anyone had a real answer for this, the Oilers would be hired well, in a heartbeat same, and totally. would be fixing this team, and you'd be a hero for the city of Edmonton. Everybody on the chat is saying the same thing. What changed? I Why? know. That's, Why? What happened? The, Nobody knows. <laughs> the doc sends in a good text seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Let's chew on this one from the doc. My friend said the Flames thought they were fundamentally broken and mistakenly made big disastrous moves in the offseason. And the Oilers thought they were peers on par with the Cup champions and mistakenly didn't do much of anything in the offseason. But my counter to that would be is, but they were. On par, yeah, almost with the, the eventual chance. Like they I, I get, they yeah. lost to them, so you're not officially on straight up par level with right. them. But you were right there. You, no other team in the playoffs last year gave the Golden Knights as much of a push. That as was the Stanley Warriors Cup did. final. That was yeah, essentially. That's how I viewed it. So right. how? Let's go back to July first. Well, let's go back to June 25th or whatever, right before the draft. Mm -hmm. What should have Ken Holland have done differently? In hindsight. They didn't have a lot of picks. They didn't pick till the second round. They were idle on day one of the draft. You didn't have a lot of leverage. Like, Where would have you made the roster moves that are different? I, I guess goaltending would have been one not trusting these two. Sure, but you're making a change there and, yeah. and bringing someone else in. What this differently is, would have we expect? Should have how, who would have saw this from the defense right now? I guess back on June 25th, based on what we saw. And who would have expected that the forward group would be, they would be averaging two points or two goals a game? Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect storm, essentially. Yeah. You know, lackluster defensive play, very little production from the forwards, goaltenders stink. I mean, Inadequate, it is a perfect storm. Yeah. So what, what, but like you what don't can drop be done? from being a top team in the Western Conference to also being one of the worst teams in hockey. 
No, with a snap They're of the a second finger. worst team in the league. I know it's unbelievable. Maybe worse tomorrow. Well, that's why I went and grabbed him for Stanley Cup winner, boys. <laughs> so this is your fault. <laughs> Fifteen to one. So this is on you. One hundred percent. And this bet. is on everyone who made a bet. Yes. I'm going to say this this is, all, that's where I'm going to go. This with. glue guy like shining bright like a diamond right now. Yeah, baby, he's Come eating on. it. I'm riding high on the Oilers. They're going to turn it around. Capital. Which, like, look, they we saw a slump from this team last year. Yeah. Between December and January. I don't know what their official record was. They it would have been better than 2-8-1. Well, one, Campbell came in and but, started playing good in January. But, when but it was, was December first, through first part of January, they weren't good. Things no, were not true. going well and yeah, trending the right true. way again. Now, I, again, I, I don't know what the record official was. I don't think it would have been 2-8-1, but it wasn't good. Maybe that's just what's the problem right now with the Oilers is that it's the start of the season. So we see the record as 2-8-1 and one right now. Mm-hmm. We see how bad the stretch is. But like last year, the rest of the season, they're actually going to play well. Better only, damn hope so. <laughs> but the only problem is that we haven't seen anything to right. show us that they will. Exactly. Uh, capital C Texan says, hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard. I tell this to my teams every practice. They get it. The Oilers don't. Sad. Capital C. That's a very true statement. Yeah. I, they need the dad's trip. I think we, they should just bump up the dad's trip get where the all dads the dads on. come on the road get trip. to yell. Yeah. They usually play traditionally pretty well during that span. So... Let's bump up the dad's trip. That's simple. Boom. Let's take him out to Florida. Boom. Take Problem him to Florida. Solved. Boom. Look take out, Kenny. Florida. Holland, coming for your Ken, job. Kenny, you want to save your job? Bump up the dad's trip. EST glue set guy said so. Boom. I respect that That's very much. simple. Uh, reminder, EST merch store, a pop-up store. It's open until next Wednesday, November 15th, and then the orders will go in. We'll get everything by uh, December 15th or sooner. We'll send that to everyone, ship that out. Um, but you only have about a week left to go purchase your merch, which is T-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, hat, coffee mug, and toque. Uh, all at edmontonsportstock.com. Go to the very top. It says EST Shop. All thanks to our official merch partner of Edmonton Sports Talk. It is the Hive Product Marketing, the HiveProductMarketing.com. Products that bring the buzz. Uh, if you need any sort of promotional items, be sure to check them out. Give them a call. Ask for Chelsea. She'll take great care of you like she's taking great care of us here at Edmonton Sports Talk. So we do thank uh, the Hive Product Marketing. But yeah, if you still want to jump in and get something EST related, uh, yes, I am wearing the EST. I always forget which hat I'm wearing. Um, that's weird, but... I am wearing the EST hat, you so if you want this hats. hat... Well, it's between this and Whale and the Wolf these days. Oh, yeah. The and, Whale and the Wolf ones. Uh, last week, I think I was wearing that one a lot. Um, but if you want this hat, if you want just one of our shirts, uh, got about a week left. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait till the new year when we figure out what we're going to do next for merch and stuff like that. So uh, jump on that now, edmontonsportstalk.com. Uh, I want to get into something here quickly, but before I do that, Scott Laurie... Jumping into the nasty hey, judges saying, whiskey in a Caesar is really good. Replace rum with bourbon and eggnog as well, also great. But he he knows his drink. I know, and I trust him very He's much. He's saying whiskey in a Caesar is really good. So I guess uh, you won't have to try it because you hate whiskey. Mm. Um, I would try it. If Scott recommends it, I usually I think it's try worth it. a try. Like, He's, he's kind of awoken me or woke, woken me up to... Um, to IPAs and he does he's great he the proverbial handhold so I do trust Scott Laurie when it comes to his expertise in this uh, are, are you guys um um old fashioned yes. yeah I love old fashioned love old fashioned man has old fashioned best, best okay. old fashioned JPL smoked okay yeah. get it smoked. have you had the pre-mixed one that it comes in yes. a bottle the it's Weisers. Weisers is very good. Actually, Dusty gave me a bottle of that last yeah. year. A couple of it couple is. of ice cubes, man. Yeah, it's deadly. It's so yeah. good. No, I'm a big uh, old fashioned fan. My wife's into that. There's not nice. a lot of places I've come that. across that I don't like the old fashioned. Uh, in Edmonton, Joey's downtown Bell Tower. I really enjoy their Joey's old fashioned. Joey's good, man. Uh, but getting it smoked is next level. Yeah. yeah, I like when they pull the glass up. And oh. <gasps> Eric, Lou, so me good. and Eric were in there a couple years ago, and they messed up the glass or whatever and the smoke mm-hmm. and the guy will redo this and we thought they're going to make him a brand new one with the smoke and all they did was like redo everything there and we're like <laughs> well you're paying like an extra 10 bucks for the smoke and yeah. then like give him like the worst experience no but oh, no. beyond that delicious at jpl and uh get it smoked honestly uh shout out to uh scott my good buddy at honey honey if you need if you want to go to tiki i haven't bar. gone there yet it's literally at the base of I our know. building i know and i haven't gone there yet 
So it's that's so not smart. Uh, Matt Cassian is also into the nasty chat. Cass. Snapback hats are amazing for your info. So get on those. They have uh, the collar is elastic. Or the, the not the collar. The, the, inside? Uh, the inside is elastic. So? Like, what do you mean? No, it's like, stretchy. Oh, okay. The the so, brim. Not the brim. The the inside. The, the inside part. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's It's, it's got also a nice snapback, stretch to it. So it's yeah. got the, you could adjust. Uh, and Cass also says EST will never go 2, 8, and 1. That's because we'll go one nine and one cast. <laughs> hey, not with Bel- Belzy on D, cast out forward. Oh, and no, where's between the pipes? If there's ever like a media tournament or something, yeah, like companies all like I think the different radio stations and media companies around town all. But I love our chances. I like our team. Guys, I love there's it. some good teams out there though. We but just we had would... one of the greatest recommendations come in. On Do the chat. challenge people? Oh no, Christopher Morris. Not, I don't think that Christopher Morris. No, but, but we, we we just say he is. Okay. Okay. Chris Morris, head coach of the Bears. <laughs> yeah. Um, EST Hangout Studio. Just a, a wet bar with oh, three yeah. stools. Right there. And Iwanek is the bartender, and the guests are sit- sitting at the bar. We could do oh, that we here. We completely rechange it, the look of this. We could. We could we definitely. Could. Like, we've got so, space. And then it'd be like like a TV show. Like, it's like we're watching Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the hangar where we're making different drinks. And, and you have to have a towel. A t- always yes, the towel always over the, 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 the shoulder. An, an ESD branded towel. ESD branded towel. Yeah. Like the um, Hockey Night in Canada ESD towel. Like branded yeah. ESD branded glasses, different types. Yeah. Try different things. Try different things. Mix That's it up. Always start with the Mott's Clamato Caesar and That's then work doable. away from there. We can and do see that. whatever else we do. What a great! I, I, you that's know, a that's great that's a really good idea. Yeah. I do really enjoy like that one. So that's something we're gonna have to look into. We could I definitely make a lot um, of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've waited long enough to go here. Oh, oh. Um, but I guess now I, I like I don't want to run out of time. Okay. The draft last week. You say you have a statement. <sighs> yeah. You say you have a statement. I, I want uh, like firstly, how was your first draft experience? I you did excellent. You, thank like you, you yeah, came you in, you fitted nicely. You yeah. didn't struggle. Finished second in the voting ahead of Eric and Tommy. Uh, you settled in. No nerves. How was the experience of your first draft? It was great. It was really, it was a fun, fun thing. I love drafts. I will, I will quit my job, leave my home. And come running for any draft you guys ever want to do. The just charcuterie know that. board you guys was the amazing. next draft. Just know potentially that. come. Yeah. I will drop. I'll everything explain all that for that. Um, okay, so the draft was great. It probably wasn't my strongest, you know, subject, but I made do with it. Um, it was not my strongest. I can tell you that right now. the The problem I had was the justice for LTE crowd um, splitting the vote essentially. That they took all my votes. My you think those board, people yes, went away from you 100%. and gave it to Eric? Yes, and that's you why you didn't catch at, up. If you Dusty. look at the actual picks in the draft, yeah, there is no way I shouldn't have won that draft. Well, I you got. Didn't. I know. So, or no, the no people way. on X said no. <laughs> I I just don't. I don't agree. You have to. There is now. Some people. Now, are here's listening. the other thing. Some people yep. are voting that never listened. Okay, that's true. Good point. That's true. That's but why I, keep, I move positions around. But here's the thing that I really have to take into perspective mm-hmm. next time, which hand up was a, was a rookie mistake. The way that it, it is presented on the graphic mm-hmm. is is huge. This was a I thing. Agree with this this is a thing we learned late at the old place. Okay, that we finally I finally realized. I go hold hold on a second. Dusty yeah. picked up on it. You put that right person in the top spot. And well, Dusty's first everything. person was Mr. Miyagi. And that's mine why was, I moved the Mine was opens Hayden up Fox there. from Coach. That's why I moved the Open up there. That's what you... That's. Do you think people even get down to who my football coach was? Barely. I think that... I think you're right. I, yeah. I think most might, but the first impression is the most important. So in that split second of going through it, that first name is yeah. going to ring very strong. And that's why I, yeah. as commissioner make decisions of what should go at the top. And it's not always going to be open. Sometimes I'm going to put a different thing up there. Really? As long always. as it's, as long as it's known it's the same. to the, as long as the people that are in the draft know the as, order it's going to so be presented. I sent it to you. The, yep. the, the, that's how it will be presented okay. on X. And I will. I just take that exact same thing, fill it out and post it there. So I that you all see ahead of time. Yeah. That killed me because well, you look at Hayden Fox Versus Mr. Miyagi, hundred percent. It's a, it's ten out of ten. It's Mr. Yeah. Miyagi. Yeah, okay, I get that. Off. Wax on, wax off. Yeah. But if you go down through the rest of mine, it was legendary. It was epic. 
totally subjective. Uh, but, exactly, because uh, he could say the he, his was I amazing. can't. I can't. I put way too much. I overthought okay, it. Well, Eric could say my he did strategy. A great job. I put too and much he didn't emphasis. Even get the vote. He got the martyr vote and it didn't even help. Him. Yeah, I put too much emphasis on the speech and the villain coach. So, but you got the best in coach. No, you got the best speech. I did. There was none better. Yeah, there is none better. But do you think people's eyes even got to that point? Because that's, I don't I think what well, the issue is the, the, when they do it doesn't matter because their impressions already I the saw what's above set. it. My There's saving the five grace above it was that Chubbs Peterson was second on my on my top. That's a great pick list. But no hand up. I will admit I I, I but I did learn that I'm a fast yeah. learner. I, I that, learned I'm that, impressed that uh, that the way you position it yeah. that means everything. So next time I draft, I will be taking that into consideration and I will win. Can I admit something? I enjoyed taking the heel turn. It was kind of fun. Welcome to the dark side. It well, I you mean, did a good I'm job. just visiting, but I <laughs> it just it was a spur of the moment thing, and I the formal complaint against Eric. I felt like such an asshole, but um, it was fun. I will admit for that two hours playing the heel, I might do it again at some point. Well, Maybe. it was a, it was a it was the right heel move. Yeah. Were you and guys it, listening today when we were discussing the next Nielsen Show draft? Uh, you guys gave me a hint at. What it was. We're talking be. SNL, right? Where else is it? What day, though? Yeah, no, it's the sports day, of the day. American Thanksgiving. So oh, on okay. the Friday of American Thanksgiving was the idea we were going to have the watch party for the Oilers game. They're in Washington, taking on the Capitals at one o'clock. Right. Which means oil stream pregame show will be at noon. Yes. It'll be an hour edition for that one. Beautiful. Um, but it's at noon that day, and then we're hoping everyone sticks around. We, we watch, watch the party. game. That's a great then idea. Then you got the oil stream postgame show after. Yep. And we're trying to find, looking on the schedule, a spot for the draft. And I went, that's already going to be a mess of a day. Yeah, well, Like, be. it's straight up going to be... It's going to be two hoots We're going to lose out. it. All of that. I Brightly think that's so. the day we found out maybe we'll have the EST uh, 6 o'clock or logger sample. We might be able to get oh, that day. Man, I'm excited And about I said, that. what if we do the draft that day? So we have the morning show. We do the draft. Dusty does lock shop. We have oil stream pregame. Mm -hmm. Then we watch the game, watch party, then the post game, And there's our, we go into the weekend. Absolutely. All taking Ubers home. Yeah. Uh, I like that very much, actually. It'd be a busy day. It'd be a hectic day. And There's our programming a lot going would stretch on. into the afternoon? Well, we are want to have the watch party, which I don't think... I don't know if I'd have to think. I don't know if we'd put it on our audio stream. Because there'd be a lot of pauses where we might not be saying anything. Yeah, that's true. So that's I don't know if that so works. So it'd be just a YouTube but maybe, exclusive? I guess I'll have to throw that out there to people. Put it, put it to the um, whether vote. they like that or the idea of uh, for those that just listen to audio, if, us just making comments about an Oilers game and discussing things was something right here. But then we'd have Oilers post game, yeah, three thirty or whatever for that. So yeah, we'd, for our we'd have a full day. Would it be better to hear us doing a watch party and commentary of the Oilers game while it's being played, as opposed to a replay of one of our morning shows? Well, or the something? more yeah, the morning show would be yeah. back up. But yeah. oh no, put a camera on in front of no, that's on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Trev. Yeah, yeah, we'll be everybody watching. The YouTube's watch gonna happen. Cam, yeah. <laughs> yeah, YouTube will happen. Yeah, but yeah. it's for the audio only stream. Mm. Is that I, something? So I'll have to YouTube. Trev is electric. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine or jump in the nasty chat and I'll, I'll ponder that one a little cool. bit. He, but that's it. And then the plan would be an SNL draft, which okay. I already know who the, what the top spot would be for the SNL draft. Right. So if it'd be the if, host. If uh, uh, yeah, okay. it has to be. It'd be host. Yeah. It'd go musical guest, and then it'd be everything. Like. Else. Because that's what 2020 you Alec Baldwin that's would be great. How, but I think not you're anymore. wrong. That I, think does, you're I don't wrong. care. I know I'm you don't care. But at least, that doesn't at matter least hear me out. I know, because I'll explain my decision first, and then you can say what you want. And I'll, I rebut. I'll rebut. You must. Um, when SNL promotes their show, they go, coming up on November 11th, it's, you know, whoever hosting, you know, Christopher Walken and musical guest is Foo Fighters or whatever. That's how they sell the show. They go, host, musical guest. That's where we're building. We're building that's an not, SNL episode. That's not what. And then that's not you what need you remember. everything else. That's not what every. That's not the number one memory of SNL. When you think of SNL, you think of Chris Farley. But when we're you, not thinking about that. We're thinking about best episode of SNL. So he's throwing we're a wrench to, into We're not it. trying to think about the best parts of SNL. What's but the you're going to have a best. We're character building or best actors. We're we'll build us the best. We're, no, it's building us SNL show. A in show. A sense. I think that's. So you're going to have. So you're going to have to have a host. You're gonna one have to host? have a musical guest. We well, only have one host. I know, but when when uh, do we have multiple hosts? I mean, how are you? Okay, so how are so you going to get host, twelve rounds out of this? One host, one music. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come and speak Whoa. here. <laughs> We're getting saucy on a Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy that brings in all this stuff, I'm just I'm biting the how hand that feeds you? me. How dare you? No, so host, musical guest. Um, you would have a number of characters, like or like actors. 
you would have weekend update host. You would have to do a couple of there's regular skits that you can have. Like there's you could probably go four or five cast members each. That would yes. be part of the skits. Yeah. Cast you members would, have, would be the right way to, so put, that's to five. present it. Yeah. You'd have host, musical guest, I said. Um you would need a couple of just sketches. So yes. two or three of those. Then a weekend host, weekend update host, that's eleven right there. So that's then a lot. and then I'm missing one thing maybe. So right there, I have it. A guest cameo. There's always those random people that come in. There's twelve right there. How about so you're worst building cast a, member of all time? Ooh. Because you're building an episode, though. We're not building. Oh, we're building an episode. Right? Like that's. Oh, okay. I think that's how we have to position this. Is yeah. you're building like an all time SNL episode. Yeah. Okay. And that's where it's so just host. off of that. You know, having so it's going to be host first. In my mind, right now, as I've read that, it would be and then host, cast, musical host, guest. musical guest. Cast sketches, weekend update, guest cameo. So it would be the ultimate. So this episode. draft, is I feel like be... because we did an they did a Seinfeld one once where they built a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, and they drafted various parts, and it was a Seinfeld episode. Was the the mindset you had to be in? You're building a Seinfeld episode. Gotcha. Here, I think the mindset needs to be you're building a Saturday Night Live episode, and you have the entire if history this is on the, front, of the show. The next day, yet yeah, like an ultimate SNL. Gotcha. episode gotcha. and the next day on the show like on the saturday this is the episode you want to watch type thing yeah you can bring, can bring back anyone from the past all that so it's cast members but then also sketches which so have to be i can so tell like, that this this draft is going to be voted on differently than the big, big time in movie what coaches. way yeah in the way that the the, the voter is now going to have to be forced to do some more depth looking at your now that the thing is, do you trust team. that voters will do that, or are they just going to vote well, based on I'm, what they look there? And I'm telling and you, it's like, X, the vote's just right there, unless we find a different way to put the voting up. I think, I think, if I may, commission, if please. I please, I'm I may. always open to suggestions. I'm I also very open take, to shutting down all suggestions. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's, hey, that's what that's the power you wield. I understand. I think if you took the cast and put that to the top, that would be more of a you know, all out bare, bare knuckle brawl for the drafters um, because it would then you'd have a lot more. See the thing that what I guess I'm trying to say is with the guest, all five, all four of those guests will be really, really good guests. Sure, mm-hmm. they're not going to make or break that. Exactly. Now you're now I'm forcing people to read the whole list. But are they going to? You ask that. Then it's okay. Then then it's going to whoever has the best host. However, it is. So if, but if, if the if host I is say up, if, if you have boys, just casts up there, whoever yeah. has Chris Farley wins straight up. I don't agree with that with Chris Farley. I think there's such a deep talent pool, but that I, is beyond Chris Farley. I, but I and think, it's Chris Farley. You have to remember, died almost thirty years ago now. But he still talked. But we still know him. As he's he the main be. gif of a lot of things As out there that we be. throw out there. So yeah. to me, I look at that and go. That is that that to as as commission host of the EST drafts. That to me, I would have to say is he's number one on the scouting report. Scouting bureau has sent it in their thing, and Chris Farley's number one for that. So if you have him, you get off to the better start than anyone else because that's the first thing you see. Whereas host, you're it's, right. It's I think a, it's, it's more. It's, yeah, it's a one it's overall more draft. Open. Everybody. It's more competitive. Which then might force people to then start, and even music you'll guess too. Like no one, like it's a whatever. That's kind of a yeah. So now I'm forcing people to start go down those lists. I hope somebody picks Ashley Simpson for musical guest because that was epically bad. You want to epically know something? Bad. That brought a lot of attention to us, views. and also maybe yeah, that's you talk about worst character. Maybe you want the worst musical guest because got numbies. That everyone talked about yeah. it. Yeah, we still it remember was, that one. It was entertaining for the wrong reasons. Maybe that's the way to go. Perhaps. Well, if if the glue crew is invited, uh, we will be there. Well, it's a Friday. Yeah. So. And you're now generally going to come in on Fridays. Yeah. That's, That's why, a, like, ooh. I've I've thrown that out there. In well, a then sense, uh, the glue that, crew has accepted the invitation. Perfect. Well, let's just make sure you're in town. You're good to go. And yes, uh, like I said, Matt, <laughs> I will be. <laughs> uh, we got some texts that came in in regard to the watch party. Big Uke says, I think the random conversation when listening only would be hilarious. Big Dave says, Maddie, run the audio stream. There is zero chance with you lot that there will be long, quiet stretches. You're overrating the host. 
That's my oh. point. He's just listening. That's my point. It, but that's There's too many hosts. Like, I so agree. now I'm forcing people to read lower. I'm taking away the potential of having the first thing win a draft. I'm making you guys draft your episode, and people are going to vote based on that. You don't get a win by having Mr. Miyagi first. I I think I leave the host in my last pick. That's okay. But the first thing people are going to see is the host, and that's going to force them to read everything else, and you can't win with Mr. Miyagi or something. (laughs) Although there is one that might win it. You think I won with Mr. Miyagi? That's what what we were talking about. Were you not listening? It it was... Uh, Well, I don't know. I might have another truck at that point. It, uh, it, it was, was you know, when you look at the top, of well, I, I learned, I learned a lot from that draft because that means a lot. The My first thing people strong, say, your it? top was Mr. Miyagi. Mine was Hayden Fox. Yeah. Boom. 10 out of 10. You win. So now I'm evening, evening the playing field by going host because it's such what an you open said. thing. Yeah. And I listened. I heard that. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's why now I'm forcing, like, it's not, you can't just win with one pick. I'm forcing you guys to have a good draft all around. First pick to last pick. Be good. Otherwise, you're going to fall. Straight up. Deal with it. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I got a title to defend this here. This is getting though. spicy. All right. I like it. I'm actually keeping stats. Never did this with the Nielsen Show draft. I'm not even surprised. I'm creating a spreadsheet. Finishings. I, actually, I don't know if I have third, fourth keeping category. Who's winner? Who's runner-up? And win percentage. I'm the Oilers of this draft so, so far. <laughs> Expecting the world. And I was just, just happy nothing. I beat Lieutenant Eric because... My God, it was getting pretty pretty close there. Yeah, he the was end. getting the pity vote for sure. Uh, back to who's Big Uke was saying about the talking. Run the audio stream. The one thing I'm also thinking maybe we then do is we start it. And if it's not going well, we could just shut it off. Yeah, that's true. And switch like to the audio uh, portion. We could, yeah, that yeah. part. Like if it's not something that if we're getting a bunch, if people listening are going, this is bad guys. Then we can not turn good. it off. We could always, well, okay, well, we'll go to a replay. Sure. We have that ability because we can do whatever the hell yeah, we want. We can. We're in charge. I love that. But you don't think there's enough, like, sports nerds like us that would just sit and watch four guys pulling their hair out listen not watch we're, we're, the watch listen. is there I'm, I'm we're taking away the you like youtube is happening that's mm-hmm. on the side but somebody driving in their car mm. right they throw on tune in which we're over a thousand favorites right now so <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much for that. i get it and you're driving around I town and you're listening to just random like is it one of those things where there are going to be <laughs> moments where something's not maybe going to be said yeah. There'll, be, there'll be moments when there's a lot of bad things said. A lot of bad things said. There'll oh, be yeah. Moments, especially if the others aren't playing well. There's going to be moments Absolutely. where it's, you know, everyone saying things. Yeah. There might be moments where it's a little, there's a little too many conversations happening. That's Washington? Uh, That's yeah. Washington, and then there's yeah. moments where there might be nothing. And I don't know if that translates well audio only. That's fair. Right? And that's just the, but maybe that's what we'd, maybe we just throw it on and... If it's not going well, we just switch it. Uh, Tube Sox says he would absolutely win that draft. Surveyor Brett Texan says, pity vote. How dare you? Hashtag justice for LTE. Get out of here, Surveyor Brett. Total pity vote. Surveyor he, Brett is a big Lieutenant Eric guy, and I, I respect yeah. that. Well, I do. But in the end, he's his hype man. Draft the coach. Don't draft a player, draft a coach. That was the draft. Well, and that's why I had to. So. He lost his pick. I had to submit a formal complaint. In the end, Jay drafted a coach. Oh, there was no... I just did not believe that that fit with what we were doing, so I gave him a chance. But he picked a coach. Lieutenant Eric did not. And if you look at the draft, if you look at the graphic that was over here on the screen beside Maddie, above the Mott's Clamato, it said... TV, movie, coaches. It did not reference sports on that. Oh. So. Snap. I'm not. Hey, the decision was made. I'm not arguing that. I knew it was. I knew it was the edgy it was a pick. Check. Pick. Yeah, check. I knew it was edgy. But in all fairness, he is a great sales coach. One of the best of all time. So good. He yeah, went just to do jail. Fraudulently. <laughs> Sell this pen. Yeah, right. Lovely. Beautiful. That is a good movie. It's a great movie. Just a little too long. Yeah, but it was they great. They could probably it's cut great. out the last like half hour in a way and shorten that up, I think. Yeah. I love the scenes where they're s- selling and training them on how the, how to make the pitch and how to do that. It's beautiful. It's lovely. I like that movie a lot. So it is SNL? That is... That I is. think that's where we're going with like it's... Yeah, I guess. And it's going to be the day of a watch party and it's going to be a mess here. It's going to be like another mess. Idea. So it'll be I don't during... think I'm going to have an issue as a commissioner that day either. 
We'll, like we'll it'd be hard. We got to figure something out for you here because no, no. Well, I'll bring I'll bring like a chair in or something. Like, that'll be simple. I figured out the microphone. I think you know so what that's you need all to good. find because like we're a, also gonna have like eventually a practicum student. They're gonna work on this show, and I'll need them to sit there. You need like a pulpit, you know, like at a church that a pastor yeah. speaks in front of. You need that sitting there, and we just sit at that with your what's it called a gavel, the gavel, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be good. Oh well, we'll, we'll get that. That would be fine. We'll but like, it's it's one where like I don't think I should have be voiding any pecs. It's going to be very it's simple. It's going to be very yeah. straightforward. Are you taking yeah. a Saturday Night Live? It, was it? Are they connected Saturday Night Live or not? Straight up. If you, if you're going to grab, actually, with that said, in theory, well, not in theory, with a host and musical guest, you don't have to take somebody that's been on Saturday Night Live. What do you mean? Explain. If I wanted my musical guests oh, to be Whale and the anybody. Wolf, I could pick them. Right. I'm building an SNL oh, thing. They, they always have first ones. But the problem is, like, why would you pick someone that's never been on there? You yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I can't. No, a musical you, guest, they can't do that You one. can't do that. That would just be, that would ambush Because then the you're just thing. taking the best music. Yeah. yeah. I understand you're what say, you're saying, but saying. it has to be one that has been on as an other yeah. performance is what we're trying to I guess. Because, like, then I would just say, like, I just take the Beatles. Yeah. It needs to stay within the... You know the feel of the draft. It's SNL. It's music acts people that have been on there. that have been on there. Hosts yeah. that have hosted because then you could say, take Elon Musk as your host He's or Joe done Rogan, it. right? Musk like, has done it. Really? Yep. It yeah, must have been awful. Uh, He's not a funny guy. No, it was, he's, eh, not, he's weird. There was a lot of it was at the time when Dogecoin was big and yeah. people thought that he was going to say something that was going to shoot up, but instead it plummeted and things like, yeah. So he's done it. He's done um, it. I stand corrected. But then in the flip side, though, it's like they sometimes have first-time hosts so or musical guests, and that's the thing. But You know, um, just speaking of that. I guess that, the only way I would change that, sorry, but would be it has ouch. to be a present host or musical guest, like somebody that's currently performing out there, like that's active. Oh, no. That, I like, mean, no, you, you, take, you have all time. Like, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying like if I was going to go with somebody that's never been on SNL before. Yeah, no, no, you've had to like, have been on SNL. Right. But you don't have to, like, when I said it last time, when you take Sinead O'Connor, because mm -hmm. everybody remembers yes. what happened there. Yeah. She's dead now, but yeah. she was on. No, but I'm saying, like, if I added where it doesn't have to be someone who's, been, like, for those first two categories, host and musical guest, because no. there, there have been first times. I guess the only way I could maybe get around it, but then this would just makes it more complicated, and that's why I probably won't do it. Yeah. But it's to say they have to be currently active. So that... You know that I don't know if Zendaya has ever hosted SNL. I don't think she has. But if you wanted to say Zendaya is my host, boom. One day no. she will host if she hasn't. No, I think I think you I think you keep it because then basic. it's easy to easy for the drafters as well to just focus on SNL. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, but then that's what the rest of the categories would fully be have to be a hundred percent SNL past. I mean, I'm still in agreement with Dusty. Is that I think if you put cast up top, it's it's that's it's, do you know why? it's rocket fuel for the draft. Do you yeah. know why Dusty wants that there? Well, because that, that way he's good. Yep. Well, but I'm 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 now that I know he, I'm, he wants that there because he knows that's how he can exploit the system. Yes. To get the win, he also. So I'm not going to listen to Dusty do things that benefit Dusty. Yeah. I'm here to make sure that the draft is fair. And another thing they do, or glue attempt. guy, is that. Eric and Dusty will go to X, formerly Twitter, and they'll say, "If you could pick this, who would you pick?" And then their list I know. is done. It's I, I well, know. You, you you have I, a Twitter account. I identify. Account. You have a Twitter X account. Yeah, but you oh. have all the ability to say it. You're to do it yourselves. Yeah, but just I just straight up. I just go to their no. people okay. and I write off because. But I then like, you can see everything this that they're saying. Prep, you guys. This is how you prep for a draft. <laughs> what are you complaining but it, about? You get to see everything that, that gets sent to them anyway. Yeah, and that's what I do. And I make so my list off of it. there's nothing to complain because, about. Like, you're, he's doing my work for me, basically. All the while, he's cheating, essentially. Uh -huh. so I'm Who's cheating, cheating off of him. Yeah. He's not cheating in any way, shape, or form. I don't have <laughs> oh, you on oh, camera. Yeah, right. I'll bring my you on up? quickly. Uh, should be. Actually, Turn yeah, my mic on. Turn my mic on. This is ridiculous. No, it isn't. It's fair. Just let me fix it's this. Valid. How is it cheating though? You're you're getting the same information off of it. That's well, I quickly picked up. I was like, oh my god, he's pan. Like when we were at twelve sixty, I would I would see what you guys would do. I quickly pre draft picked okay. up on it, th th this and I just took down all the suggestions they gave to you and Eric. And I would use them to my own advantage. I'm just going to say right now, this is Movers and Shakers, brought to you by the Marco and Mike Realty. Realty One Group Insider, let Marco and Mike earn your trust. They're not like me as a commissioner, where apparently I don't have some people's trust. 
What? They will get your Very trust. True. Well, the people are, keep ripping me. Are they giving them. you the gears here? Like no, these I'm guys fine. are no, just they don't, people. You, you don't even like the I way I'm going to be doing them. things. You don't trust me with my draft I'm order. You agreeance. just came in and opened the door and didn't like the way I was doing no, no, the draft. I just, I but people was... you will trust are Marco and Mike. Marco and Mike. Com. For more up. info on the dynamic duo, sorry, continue with what's on. Taking my popcorn. No, I forgot what we were. What we were. No, Dusty, I agree with you that we should have. I think the cast at the top would be the way to do it. No, because this is what this is how you know you're going to win. No, because you're going to take the one person, win. and th- this messes with your draft. No, strategy. there's such a no. deep dive. Yes. I was thinking about what you guys are driving. Like, I would be fine. I think there's three guys that jump out to me. That I'm like, he could help you win that draft. He could help you win that draft. Cast? He could help you win you're that draft. Cast, cast, maybe weekend update host. Who are they? I'm not saying anything. I'm out now. Like, I'm not saying a single thing. You guys will have to wait until Eric posts it on you on Twitter, and then Tommy can go in and write down all the answers. Exactly. Like, well, you're going to do the same thing. But, you, but you do I also too. go but, online and research, and I'll, I'll, I'll build a. But, do you see my draft page? Like you know, it you is can quite elaborate. Yes, it's it building is. a draft team. You have to have scouts everywhere. You got to send your scout. That's why he gives. It's no credit. different than texting your buddies and being like, "Who would you take first overall yeah, at SNL draft?" He, like, he has yeah, his team at Mister Mike's Casual Steakhouse. Eric's got his team outside the old Shanks building. Didn't they? They tear got it down? their scouts. No, no, no it's still out. They're just they're holding it until we're ready to move there. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> <Hello. Jeez. laughs> no, they're just waiting for us. Someone said they tore it down. I was okay, like, I got to go never drive by now just to make sure. No, but um, I hope not. Uh, I'm at that Arby's all the time. Oh, so okay. it's, it's still Shanks there. is still there. So, okay, yeah. but so it's so it's public information. Yeah, like, well, I know, but it's just like so. What's the issue then? If we all can look at, I think it's just a little bit. Your face. That's the issue. It's a gray area. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah. He's getting, blue guy's getting into it, God. man. Jay, Jay's feeling it. I just feel like you're dipping into a gray area when you do that. How's that gray a gray area? area? What are you talking about? I'm just trying about? to intrigue what the gray area is. Because that they're just, just... Like, you can go right now... So we're not supposed to use the internet on, at all to prep? No, what? No, you, you, you could come on the, the Thursday before that draft, right here on the show, and be like, who should I take? What he's Text saying... Text me, 780 and you could read all those texts. And you get that terrible more suggestions, too. Tommy and I don't have the same Twitter X power that you do. He's the, got a pretty good the one. The glue crew is sure. coming on strong, I must say. <laughs> but it's not that big yet. So... You might get something that was totally out of left field that you did not find on any of those lists that we all Googled, and you might have a, a dark horse that was not, you know, made aware that you get just simply yeah. because you have in my X DMs? amount of followers. Yeah. Well, we can't change that okay, unless we say but, you you can only draft if you no, have like twenty thousand no. followers. I yeah, guess. no, that, I'm not allowing. Like it's it's Ooh. open. No, it's Ooh, open. It's, it's open. open. Like I'm not shutting He's that been down. On it today. I'm yeah. not shutting because it's like look. Some teams in hockey have better scouting departments than others. You don't have a good scouting department. Okay, okay. be better. Get a better scouting department. When, Do it yourself. Wow. Let's not deal with this. Oh, it's not well, you fair for me. You put a lot into your last draft. You had notes and oh, of course dates. Did. You and, ex- yeah. had the all at the expense of my family. <laughs> <laughs> my poor, I would say my poor I, children were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Dad went supper. Shut up! <laughs> I'm studying for my draft. <laughs> you should get them involved in the drafting study. They could be your I, research team. Well, they're they, analytical. They, they, Marshall the Muzz always come up with picks. Yep. Marshall said he I should have taken uh, 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 Daffy Duck in the. Uh, in the last draft, I was from like, Space I was Jam. Like, thanks for the uh, thanks for the recommendation, Marsh. I'm gonna pass on that one, but I love you. Like, well, I re-listened. I, I, well, I listened to your breakdown the day after the draft. Okay, and you were right. I screwed it up, but I learned. I learned. You fast. think you screwed it up in the first couple picks there? I screwed up the way that it was the way it's presented. Yeah, yeah. That is it. That is that is it. If you win that. Because I don't think that most people got down to my lower picks, like my villain coach of Bud Kilmer, my Kilmer was a great pick of Tony D'Amato, like inches. Here's the one question, though: that do you want it or do, Mr. Does Miyagi? Does the whole team matter to the voters, no, or it is it only going to be one or I two? I stacked it with Mr. Miyagi, and Mick, and Ted Lasso. I don't yeah, I mean, think it. Well, that's oh, why sorry, I knew Ted Lasso won, which is yeah. all on you guys. Yeah, hundred percent. You guys I, let yeah. him fall to whatever the fifth round can or whatever I, is. That's on you guys for like recency bias. There is no bigger coach in fictional movies and TV than Ted Lasso, and you guys allowed him to fall to the fifth round. You know round. what, Kamish? I have never seen a bloody episode of that. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, you would but, love Ted Lasso. I know, but, but I was being true to myself. Sorry. Okay, but, okay, and this goes back <laughs> Sorry to... Sorry being a good, honest person. Oh, I'm with you. But that's where this draft you is. Took, you are, took the assistant coach of Ted Lasso <laughs> with the fur <laughs> fox wing. Before what Ted Lasso, about? which stunned me. God. Which stunned me. No, I admitted you my mistake. You took the beard no before Ted Lasso. Yeah, I admitted my mistake. But here's my 
thing. Strategy was bad. You then that's the difference in the draft is do you vote for heart or do you vote for the win? And you went for the heart there. Straight I've been up. Stuck in but you have to make picks that you don't know things sometimes and make the, and that's where Ted Lasso was a big fail. Yeah, and by next multiple, time, next time I'm voting you, for the win. That's like getting Tom Brady you in the to sixth draft round to the no. voters. You have to. And you I still finished that second though, dude. I like, did. That was pretty yeah, good. I did. Like, and I I did it entirely on heart of what my honest sure. favorites were. Yeah. But yes, I totally dropped the ball on Ted Lasso. That was a one that was a first round pick. You're right. We all did. That should I have been passed second on too many times. That's one hit yeah. the draft. It's Tom Brady in the sixth round. Hey, even the Patriots passed on him, but they ultimately picked him. Yeah. And he ultimately picked him. On no, that I think if I didn't take him, he might have even slid in further because none of you guys have watched it. I had him on my list, yeah, but I didn't feel right taking him because yeah. I've never seen an episode. I'm stunned and Eric didn't take him earlier, actually. Me too. As, uh, because he, he sees the buzz. And he also saw it on your sheet that you had Ted Lasso. I had Ted Lasso in the photo at the top of my sheet. And I'm surprised he didn't, in like the third, fourth round, go, oh, Ted Lasso's still there. Screw Dusty. I'm taking him. I think you were baiting us by putting the picture up there. Clearly not. I think he won the draft, <laughs> and I took him. I couldn't see it otherwise. I would have taken the bait. But like, so, in the, so it's only a couple picks that matter. So it's not your whole team, and that's where I, I'm going to force people to try to read the whole list, straight up. What if on the graphic to see to, how to that help. works? Well, there's two things on the graphic. We need numbers of where they were picked. No, like team one, team two, team three, team four. Do you think everybody would just get that? That it goes in order, left to right, one through four. Well, which we, one was one like on the vote? Yeah. Which one? Well, usually I put something. I didn't know how to. I usually label it something connected to the draft. Or like who picked first, who picked so, second. Well, no, yeah, no. team. Vote, well, we don't put them in order because no, 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 no. I know that. Yeah, yeah. There was no late numbering of this is team, group one, this is group two, this is group. There three, are people that four. read right to left, like my mother in law. Right. She'll place her cards. You know, when you're playing crib or whatever, and you usually go low to high. Yeah. She does it the opposite. Okay. I will say, for this. I'm not placating to those people that can't figure it out. Oh. It's common Whoa. sense. The list was, Woo. they were in so order, left to right. ESG. There's one, wow. two, three, four. Oh, a... If you couldn't figure that out, wow. that's not my problem. Caesar. Not oh, wait, so wait, wait, we're thinking, I you're think, thinking like because it wasn't group, people just voted left to right, one, two, three, four. They didn't four. know which one was one, two, three, four. It's like dyslexia. It's a real yeah, but thing. I was four and I won. So, so it's not like somebody then was have been voting for one at that point is what he said, which just, is Tommy, just, which just, isn't going to be the case. Just nitpicking, just so nitpicking. No, like in the, I'm not placating to those people. What about, I'm sorry, what about, I'm just going to be about, What about like actual graphics? That's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work. Do you think I have a team behind me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. No, I don't. We don't have a desk yet. I well, was, I was yeah. kneeling desk, on actually. the floor, <laughs> and you think I have time to add pictures to all of our graphics? Okay, you're right. You're right. That would be tough. I like would look. Would we love to do that one day? Yes, I would. I'd love to grow the EST draft into the full thing. A monster. Full yeah. monster. Tommy's that is getting cool. Tommy's getting some everybody thinks you're crying and that you're what? pissed off because you because you can't win a draft. Uh, no, 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 no. Smith, I'm a multi Brent I have like Smith nine and, rings of draft wins. You don't Brent have nine wins. Okay, like, you have four like three or five. wins. Like, no, no, I think four it's more about four. What did you win? What did you win? Which one did you win? Remember. He I'm won the he won strip mini mall draft, strip yeah. mall draft. You won that I won, one. Uh, you won a couple of the late school ones. lunch draft. Did you win school lunch draft? Yeah. Uh, I want a couple more. I think but I'm at like four or five wins. Brent does say, Brent Smith, it sounds like Tommy's crying because he can't win a draft. I've won Poor a bunch Tommy of them. is hey, pissed man, with a laughing emoji. Currently at EST, you're last. You're, you're I, last. I, you are at the bottom of the barrel it. right now. And, and I, know, I know what I did it's wrong. It's not what you do in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a horrible I love impersonation. That put that into the oh. cut-up. I was just like, look at Tommy go here. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I, I did not get off to a good EST draft, uh, but my TSN 1260... A little bit of that Nelson legacy show. carries over. We yeah, don't talk about that anymore. Though. But no, I know no. where I faulted last week, and I did. I enjoyed the heel turn. Yeah. Um, did Jay I get into your back. head? No. Are you sure? Absolutely. He I says, thought you were putting like no. exuding out some he fake confidence out there on the couch. There. You were laid back, almost like you wanted somebody like a no. therapist to come talk to you. No, 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 no. You know no, what I, a stress puppy just lies down and is like. <laughs> That was Tommy. Just stressed. Uh, he was no. so stressed. Out there. <laughs> I thought that my strategy was good because I was like, I'm going to get the best assistant coach, best speech, and best villain coach. And that was that. That was such a flaw. Yeah. And I realized yeah. that. And it was. Jay is right in the theory of you see those top three like you had just bam, bam, bam. And I, then the rest of yours was okay. I, I, will also, I will say this like from a draft perspective with where the guys are placed. If there's something about having that. Full group category at the top, 
I don't think it hits as hard if it's just like a one off at the top. I think eyes are taken yeah. down to the biggest section. So you always go wherever that big section is, man. You do have to you do have to hammer that. You so it doesn't have, matter what I put first. Essentially, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So I host is confirmed. No, I, number I think one. I think no. I it wasn't. I wasn't so much. I think in general. You think the host is like really important to the show? No, no, no. And I, I necessarily no, 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 I don't care. I don't, I don't think, think it is either. I yeah. think the way SNL promotes their shows is host musical guest. That's one of the reasons why we go to the top. I think the because musical we're building guest that is more appealing to me than the host. But it's second when yeah. SNL promotes it. Right? They're mm-hmm. on only twice. Sometimes they're a little bit in the sketches. So it's it's how SNL sells it is host musical guest. On that, it would also, make sense for our board it's to have also host. then yeah. straight up. It is such. Um, equal category yeah. that then hopefully it forces people then to start reading down. I, I would probably put all of our individual categories at the top and then the open like the cast list at the bottom. Saying, are you going to mix a huge cast list? Into I the think middle like of that the thing? right now as it depends. We'll have to figure out what are all of our categories. You know, what you are need be, is a female it, cast member as well. It's of course, yeah. Like you can have like two male, two female, or and three male. You could do that. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, because you need a good mix. But it would be host. It'd be musical guests. It'd be cast members. Weekend up, no sketches. Weekend update host, or maybe host goes before sketches. sketches. You could do like two. Tw- tw- um, well, you could even do more. I mean, I could I could draft three then, Tracy Morgan sketches. Right? And then the uh, what was Brian the last Bellows. thing that we had exactly <laughs> an the, astronaut Jones, a classic, <laughs> the yeah. celebrity cameo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be kind of your. We, could easily, we could easily do twelve. One thing that easy is is needs to be amended before is the wheel that you guys use. Mm-hmm. To create the order, what does of draft. it need to be amended with? It was backwards. <laughs> so when you guys did it last oh, time, oh, that, that, but that's how we did it at the old place, and that's what we carried. I over. know, but it makes zero sense. That's cool. The probability, yeah, should be the opposite way because you have but, the lowest. So when there's four people on there, that person should be to get number one pick. You four guys or five it, swing might be better. You guys did that's it. That's the, the argument. Is four or five swing is pretty strong. Well, that's not that's not for argument. It's just I'm talking mathematically. Probability wise, you're just doing it backwards. Well, that's because you think number one is the spot to win. Who doesn't want to be number one? This draft where four or five swing is huge. Well, but no, I, I'm just I'm trying to do the math on this. It's like in the okay. Uh, so when there's four people on the wheel, the movie, uh, it's the hardest 21. for you to. It's the hardest. You have the lowest odds. You have a one in four chance of being picked. Yes. So that should get you the get first one. pick. But we're saying, that, but and you then also, when there's three people, what are on the, the board, odds that you don't get selected through two draws? Or three uh, draws. That's right. Like if you add messes. that up, you'd have twenty five percent chance. The next time you have a thirty three percent chance, I, so you'd have fifty percent chance. 50% the, chance. The reality so like, is, I think one way to do it, like with the chairs, is maybe we just go straight up. We draft a draft order. We draft a chair order, but it's selection by you. Okay, let's say this again. So we drew, we do the circle. We it's going to be you pick where you want to go. It's oh, this person's going to pick first, second, third, fourth. But you're picking which pick. You I do want. some of that in fantasy football draft. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, I like that. And then so, also, and then yes. and then I would say then the reverse order of that would be we don't even have the to chairs. spin. The reverse order is chairs, or maybe it's, it's almost like winning a coin flip and deferring your decision. Yes, or, or maybe mm. that's what like it's straight up. I like that. You could pick whatever you want. So you could pick your pick on first, or yeah. you could pick your chair first. Yeah, and we do a reverse draw and. I like I, we'll do the spin and then I'll text all of you guys. Because and we'll depending get your on the picks. draft, you may want to be in that three slot. You may want okay. to be the four or five, or you may want to be the one slot. To me, like that's a significant change. It might be a change. The there's, there's a like, lot to think about. There's a lot that to might have to go to committee or something. Or, like that's the, well, we have a committee now. Yeah, YouTube Trev. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, that was um, Movers and Shakers, brought to you by Marco and Mike Realty, Realty One Group Insiders. Check them out, marcoandmike.com. Let them earn your trust in when you're buying or selling a home. Uh, that's also it for the for the hangout. you got to get going Oops, in sorry, there. Sorry, boys. Too much out here. you got to get to the lock shop. Yeah, I'll get on the lock shop here. It's in a couple here. minutes. No uh, you, Huss. Just me and Huss today. Just uh, delivering more dubs. Couple EST hey parlays up, including one that has Mr. Sprinkles, Alfonso Davies' assist for Byron Munich coming up Who's later Mr. today. Spr- I heard Me. that today and He's I was Mr. laughing. I wanted to do a, a sprinkle to today. Oh, it still was there, but oh, I, want, okay. I wanted a sprinkle. Thanks for doing a lean when you said it too. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, I wanted a Alfonso Davies thing, oh, there, nice. but it's not a lean. It was a it was a, it was sprinkle, a sprinkle. We gotcha. should get we should get the glass break music for whenever Dusty enters the hangout. Oh, yeah. oh that was, that was when he first Brett. came in. We we needed something like <laughs> you that because I was just doing it. I was, I was like, what's going on? And yeah. I was going along cans, in the two truck, cans of Bud Light, listening on tune into you guys, and I was getting fired up. Tommy, Jay, 
Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you for the thank you for having popcorn me. Popcorn bowls. Oh, delicious! It's mm. great seeing you, Tommy. Have yes. fun on the oil stream later tonight. I, I'm gonna be or here this for the rest of the afternoon. Yes. Like, uh, what's oil going stream on? noon. <laughs> Dusty and Tommy. Tommy's Tommy. spicy today. I love it. Uh, that's coming up at noon. Up next, it is the Lock Shop with Dusty and Haas. Thanks for tuning in to the EST Hango, which is presented by Mott's Clamato Caesar. Uh, you can get the pickled bean, extra spicy original, and or uh, just. 12 packs or the variety packs. Uh, go pick those up today for um, the All Stream. Today's today, show was extra spicy. If it I was, had to pick which it flavor was, it was, it was 100%. extra spicy. Uh, thanks for tuning into the Hangout. Up next, it is the Lock Shop. Stay tuned for that.